Live from the San Diego Sports Arena, Real 14 presents IHL Professional Hockey. Tonight, the San Diego Gulls host the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Tonight's game is brought to you by Hardy, Zion's Bank, and Coca-Cola. Sports Arena in San Diego, California. We're live as the Salt Lake Golden Eagles prepare to take on the San Diego Gulls. And Randy Busick, uh, we'll have a lot of fun. The Eagles have won six games in a row and have a good 11-point lead over San Diego in the division standings. Well, uh, the Eagles are probably playing their best uh, hockey of the season so far uh, right now, Mike. Uh, they're, uh, Bobby Francis has them fired up before every game. Uh, they're coming out and they're playing every game with a purpose. So uh, just as just another part of the, their whole game plan to get a good strong uh, position in second place and uh, try and catch Peoria for the divisional race. Eagles have not had a television broadcast uh, during their 1984-85 season, inaugural year in the IHL. They're first televised game since the team has uh, joined the IHO, but let's uh, pause uh, for the national anthem. More people are coming and going in Honda Accords than any other car in the U.S. Now, for an unprecedented limited time, your Utah Honda dealers are going to make Honda Accord even more pleasurable with a special 8.9% financing offer. Honda Accord. Your Utah Honda dealers. Ken Garth, Peterson, Dallies, Willie, Academy, Heritage. With service as good as the Hondas they sell. Real 14 KXIV, Hot 94.9. The Vic Crew and Osco Drug present the Don Russell Sports Card Extravaganza February 16th. 70 dealers' tables will have super selection and bargains. Uh, I think it's just a well-rounded card show. It's, I'm very impressed with it. Meet Eric Anthony and get his autograph at 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can redeem Planters Relief Products proof of purchase for $1 off an autograph picture. The Donra Salt Lake Sports Card Extravaganza at the Utah State Fair Park, 1000 West North Temple. Admission $3 at the door. Much money down. We've been looking around. Moving with us. My home that's right for you. Moving with us. Moving with U.S. Pro Ski Tour, Saturday. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Sports Arena in San Diego, California. We're just about ready for hockey. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the San Diego Gulls. The Eagles in second place in the West Division. The San Diego Gulls in fourth place. Salt Lake coming into the action tonight with a comfortable 11-point lead over San Diego in the division standings. Here we go. Live from the Sports Arena, and immediately the Golden Eagles, Kerry Clark, able to rumble down the right side into the San Diego zone. 
shoots it to the right of the goal. And the netminder, Elaine Chevrier, able to play it to the right side, and the Eagles hold it in. Kerry Clark shoots it right back in front, and playing the puck to Bob McKinnis for San Diego. He scoops it between the two Salt Lake defenders, and all the way down in the center. Just underway here from San Diego, the Eagles and the San Diego goals. And now back in his own side for San Diego is Dean Martin. He takes a big hit from Kerry Clark. He fights for the right of the goal and try and freeze it and succeed. 35 seconds gone, first period. A scoreless hockey game. And uh, Randy Music, a former member of the Montreal Canadiens, Stanley Cup championship team, past four years with the Golden Eagles. Randy, welcome to the broadcast. And uh, immediately, great for checking by the Golden Eagles. Thanks, Mike. Uh, that's part of the reason for the success of the Golden Eagles and this uh, little bit of a winning streak they have going is their quick start that they're able to apply to the opposition. They've scored the first goal in uh, five of their last six, six games. And uh, a big part of the reason why they've, they've jumped out into an early lead and they've been able to sustain that lead and to go on and win the games. Mark Euro, fifth uh, place in the NHL scoring parade, draws up for uh, Salt Lake, but immediately the goal is able to wind it to center. And Kevin Melrose gains possession. Here's Melrose being checked by Mike Sullivan, clears it to the San Diego blue line, and Dave Coral winds to center. Here's Tim Swinney in his uh, second year with Salt Lake for Mark Euro, a shot. That's blocked off of the defense, and the goals take over. And a gentleman that played in Phoenix last year, Robbie Nichols, plays the center. And a chance for San Diego, so Young a shot. That deflects fine. Scott Young, the youngster on defense for San Diego. Eagles Martin Samard, fourth year with Salt Lake, able to play it for Tim Sweeney, who is able to push it to center, and Kevin Grant gains possession into the San Diego zone. Being hounded by Young, and he backhands on edge. The Eagles change on the fly. A new line out for Salt Lake as San Diego control the puck and wind the center. Here's Daryl Olson for Salt Lake, able to poke it right back into the San Diego zone. And Scott Young gains possession. Eagles first win a four check, but here comes 33 year old Ron Dugay in the center. He's a, a 12 year veteran of the NHL, sidestepped, however, by Brian Deasley. And Deasley, who made an artful play last night on a Salt Lake scoring play, believe it for Daryl Olson. Early on, first period for San Diego, no score, as Paul Cruz able to work to center. Into the goal zone, stops against the defenseman Bannister, with the former Golden Eagle, Charlie Simmer, on left bank. Now San Diego control the puck into the Salt Lake zone, controlling the play as Darcy Norton, and he rims it right back of the goal. Orange Sharples in net tonight for Salt Lake, plays under the boards, but not out. Al Tour holds it in. Behind the net for Ron Dugay, trying to set him on, but Brian Deasley parades the slot, able to poke it into center. Glad you've joined us here tonight. The Eagles and San Diego. No score here in the first period. 2.20 Here's Cruz for Salt Lake. Able to break the center into the San Diego zone. Right wing pass in front for uh, the Eagles. Tournament in front to Cruz, but it's blocked off at the last moment. And the goal is able to play it free in the center. And Larry Floyd able to pick it up on left wing. And Bannister sails it right back into the Eagles zone. Early on, first period is a very fast paced opening stanza. And uh, the Golden Eagles quick the start plays the center for the 20-year-old Corey Lyons for Lassard at center, and he chips it on edge back of the San Diego goal. Here's Darren Lowe on the right side, able to play it free in the center, and uh, the goal is McKinnis slams it in. Sharples makes the save, and he sets it up on left wing for C.J. Young. Young able to play it for Scott McCready at center ice for the captain, Ritz Trinamaz, but McKinnis steals for San Diego. Eagles play it in, however, offside. 3-10 gone, first period, and Randy Music, great action to start off here in this game. Well, very fast-paced action, uh, Mike. It's good to see. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised at uh, how things are uh, going so far. We have to take into effect uh, uh, that uh, this is going to be the sixth game in uh, nine days for the San Diego goal. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to be able to adapt and whether fatigue is going to be a factor for them. Eagles have their longest winning streak of the year, six games, and they've outscored the opposition 33 to 13 during that stretch. They've done an outstanding job of late and have uh, had some outstanding offensive performances. And one of the players, of course, that is the team leader in offense, Mark Bureau for Salt Lake. He leads a line with Tim Swinney on the left and Martin Samard in his fourth year for the Eagles on the right side. And immediately the goals play at the center, but Samard breaks it up and leads for Bureau, and he pokes it right back into the goal zone, and Dean Morton has possession. But on the far side, a Salt Lake player is shaken up, and uh, Brian Pataffi, over 13 years as a professional trainer, out to attend. I believe to Martin Samar. Let's see over there. Is it? Uh, I, I think that's uh, Mark Bureau. Mark Bureau shaking up in the far side. Well, hopefully uh, nothing serious. Nothing serious has happened there. He's such a big uh, part of this Salt Lake team. Mark Bureau uh, taking a, a look at him as Brian Pataffi, and we'll come back in just a moment on the Salt Lake Golden Eagles uh, broadcast here tonight. 
Ron Sheese, attorney at law, has been helping people in need of debt relief take the pressure off since 1963, specializing in Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 bankruptcy, the opportunity to make a fresh start. Call 262-0246 to hear what the options are for your financial future. There's no charge for your first visit, and if you choose to file bankruptcy, all attorney's fees can be worked out on terms. Call 262-0246 now and hear how you can get a fresh start. Mike Barrick alongside Randy Busick here in San Diego, and Mark Bureau is okay after being attended to by Brian Pataffi. Mark Bureau holds the Eagles record for most points in a game. He had eight one night against the Indianapolis Knights a couple of years ago. He also shares the record for most goals at a game of five. He's okay, but is replaced in a new line for the Golden Eagles. It's Tim Sweeney with Martin Samard. Brian Easley will play the left wing side at this particular point. And Rob McKinnis plays for San Diego. His brother Al plays for Calgary. At the right point, Kevin Brandt a shot. And steered aside by Chevry, and he himself plays it on the boards. Eagles Grant holds it in his shot. Black off in front. Now a chance for Samard, trying to work it free to the right wing point. Grant after it for Samard, but black off by San Diego. And the goal's played on up wing. Scoreless game, we played four minutes in the opening period. Glad you joined us here tonight. Buck is loose on the right side. Goals player Sullivan is uh, able to play it to the Salt Lake uh, Blue Line. And now back to the left of the goal where Melrose plays for Salt Lake. Kevin Melrose, who plays college hockey at Harvard, on the right side for Kevin Grant. That's the defensive pairing for Salt Lake at this point. Eagles trying to work it free, but San Diego's Dugay on the boards tries to dig it free. Dugay able to work the center, hacked down by Todd Harkins. The play continues as the referee, Dave Cassidy, watches impassively. Now the puck is loose at the Salt Lake Blue Line in the scoreless game here live from San Diego. Marco Siki able to play it for Paul Cruz at the blue line for the San Diego's offside pass in front for Terry Clark, but the pass is broken up. And then on left wing, Darcy Norton plays for the goal. Cuts in the slot, works against Cruz, holds on and shovels it right back behind the goal for the golden, the former Golden Eagle, Charlie Sim. It's in front, trying to set it on. Young can't have pulled the trigger. The Eagles play at the center. With a penalty, I believe, against the lake at this point. A delayed penalty as Chevrolet skates to the bench. And with 4.57 gone into the first period, Randy Busick, our first penalty, and it's going to go against the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Well, it looks like uh, uh, referee Cassie is going to whistle down an interference penalty against Marco Sicchi. Uh, Marco Sicchi was a little bit upset at the call, and uh, if you look at his statistics, uh, he's not known for a person to uh, be a aggressive and, and be in the penalty box. It's kind of an unknown territory. Salt Lake. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the Eagles will have to play with uh, four men, and uh, the San Diego Gulls will have five. So the Eagles will be shorthanded for two minutes. The Gulls have the most power play goals. They have 78 in the IHL, and uh, they've had an outstanding power play unit. Osiki for interference, time of the uh, penalty, 457, and the Eagles a one man short. Of course, in a power play, the Eagles will be a man short for two minutes unless the Gulls score a goal. Here's the lead pass at center for former Eagles. Steve Martin's in a shot, but it's offside. It appeared that it was offside. He shot it in and behind Sharple. And it appears it's going to be a power play goal and a 1 0 San Diego lead. No, they're going to wave it down. We didn't hear the whistle. Sharples heard it, and as a result, he just let it go into the goal, but the uh, San Diego players thought it was in. Well, as soon as the linesman uh, blew his whistle, uh, Steve Martinson was already in his windup and really couldn't c control himself and stop himself from shooting. But uh, Warren Sharples did hear the whistle. He sort of relaxed uh, and stood up, and that's why the puck was able to dribble in the net. And as a result, the faceoff will be back into the San Diego zone. Sometimes, Randy, uh, the goaltenders will let up if they feel the play is definitely going to be offside. Well, uh, uh, usually a player really tries to uh, control himself and stop from shooting the puck on, on the goaltender if the whistle's blown because it only causes problems somewhere down the line. Well, it's not a power play goal. We're scoreless here. 20 seconds gone to the penalty, and the goal is still working on the man advantage. Here is Sullivan in his center. The rookie smacks it right back into the Salt Lake zone, blocked off at the Salt Lake Blue and Larry Floyd has to spin back up the middle, but uh, stolen by Rich Chermaz in the San Diego zone, but Sullivan takes it away. The Eagles have 13 shorthanded goals and have had an outstanding record when shorthanded. Here is Salt Lake's Lassard, sweeps it for Young, and he winds it all the way to center, and actually, I believe, up into the crowd is stopping to play with 5.44 gone into the opening period. A scoreless game, and uh, we'll take a break right here.
score this game here in San Diego. The Eagles and the goals. Is another minute to work on the power play for San Diego. Here's the centering pass for Darcy Norby. Twirls around. Back to the right wing point. A chance for Taylor Hall. Six save Sharples. Big rebound in front, but it's blocked off. And the Golden Eagles, uh, Kevin Melrose on left wing. Able to charge out of there and gingerly plays it into the goal zone. Uh, great play by Kevin Melrose and the whole uh, penalty killing unit uh, for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles to get that puck out of trouble in front of Warren Sharples. Here's a chance for San Diego. Very Norton tied up by the Golden Eagles uh, defenseman Kevin Melrose. They fight for it to the left of the goal. And finally it squirts free for Kevin Grant. He's able to play it off the boards in the center. And Taylor Hall in his seventh year professional for San Diego for Charlie Simmer. Stolen, however, by McPhiro. And a goal shoots. He's gone! thing about this is, uh, Mike, you have a, a guy in the International League who leads uh, in shorthanded goals, and you're also playing against a team who uh, has given up the most shorthanded goals in uh, in uh, this uh, IHL. Here's a look at the replay now. Uh, Charlie Simmer just coughs the puck up. Great anticipation by Mark Bureau. He walks in between the two defenders, and he throws it up top glove. Uh, watching Mark Bureau on practice, that's kind of a, a forte of his. That's where he's going to look to shoot all the time on a goaltender, is up in the top glove area. And the Golden Eagles have the lead at 1-0. Bureau's 35th of the year, unassisted at 6.40. And Randy, the Golden Eagles Bureau, a penalty-killing extraordinaire, as we talked about, his seventh shorthanded goal. The Eagles 14th as a team, so the Eagles have been outstanding in that department as we have a little bit of a delay to the left of the goal, perhaps. Uh, uh, I think somebody probably lost their contact, Mike. Uh, usually yep. something like that happens. Uh, everybody gathers around and tries to find uh, the little contact on the ice. Don't forget to... Uh, Thursday night, tomorrow evening at the Salt Palace, the Eagles against Kansas City, 7 p.m. If uh, you're involved in the military, dependents uh, will be allowed to come to the game, no charge, tomorrow night, 7 p.m., the Eagles against Kansas City. And immediately the puck is cleared right back into the Salt Lake zone. The Eagles are still shorthanded, although they have the one nothing lead, and again, they clear it down the ice. So another good job for Salt Lake to get shorthanded. But again, Mike, they've scored the first goal of this game, so let's see if they can carry on with the way they, uh, they're Salt winning ways uh, as far as that goes. The Eagles have killed it off. They've also scored a goal. They have the lead one nothing. They beat San Diego 5-3 here last night. Here is Bannister for San Diego, leads it to center, and Scott McCready deflects it up into the stands. A stop to play with seven on gone in the opening period, one nothing so late. And of course, uh, Randy here, this building, uh, San Diego built in 1966, the San Diego Sports Arena. The original cost $6.5 million. And you look at the new arena in Salt Lake City, some $66 million. Of course, that uh, figure uh, could change a little bit, but uh, over a 20-year period, quite a change as far as costs are concerned. Well, it's funny the way things go, Mike. Uh, it costs a lot more to build, but sometimes these older arenas are more fun to play in. They seem to be more confined, and the crowd is right in on top of the action. They feel closer to the action. They get a better feel for the game. Voice of Randy Busick alongside, I'm Mike Barrick. 12.52 left in the first. The Eagles, on a Mark Bureau shorthanded goal, have the lead at 1-0. And Daryl Olson able to play it on left wing and into the San Diego zone. Todd Harkins steaming in. His shot, Chevrier catches it and holds on on a good shot to the right of the San Diego goaltender, Elaine Chevrier. Randy, we want to touch on the scratches tonight for the Golden Eagles. So Richard Zemlack, Andrew McKim, and Darren Banks. Of course, uh, Wayne Colley, the goaltender, is on loan to Cincinnati of the East Coast Hockey League. The Eagles tonight going with 10 forwards and six defensemen. Here's uh, Todd Harkins going down the far. He, see, he spots the far side. He takes a shot. Uh, Elaine Chevrier had no kind of traffic in front of him, so he really had no kind of problem making that save. 10 forwards, six defensemen. Well, something uncharacteristic of uh, Bobby Francis. He likes to go with an extra forward and five defensemen. He feels that his defensemen are more involved in the game when, when they're out more often. Here's the puck loose back of the goal. The Eagles with a 1-0 lead here from the San Diego Sports Arena. Lead pass on the right side. Darren Lowe into the Eagles zone. Tries to center one, but block off in the slot. And Brian Deasley on right wing lets it go for his own defense. And Todd Harkins, the rookie for Salt Lake, able to play it to the blue line. Steve Martinson for San Diego. Shoots it free, but Darren Olson able to play it to the boards. However, stolen by Darren Lowe to the left of the goal. Low now, tied up, they fight for it over there. And finally, Deasley, for the Golden Eagles, breaks it up there, chips it for Cruz at center. He's knocked down, and then off the Salt Lake blue line, Darrell Olson controls. Eight minutes gone into the opening period. Olson throws it deep into the San Diego zone. The Eagles change up offensively, and the new line, Bureau, Sweeney, and Samard. And the goals take over. 
over on the left wing, and McKinnis just shoots it right back behind the goal. Kevin Melrose plays the puck. He played for a championship team at Harvard University. On the left wing side, Mark Bureau able to break the center, and then just to wax it into the stands and to stop the plays. Boy, he let go a bullet up there, and uh, fans had to scatter up to the right of Elaine Chevrier. Well, Mark Bureau wanted to make a dump deep into the goal's zone and uh, make it tough for Elaine Chevrier to handle and make any kind of a play to break out his team. So the easiest thing to do is put it high up in a glass. It takes funny bounces, and it's harder for the goalie to handle. Warren Sharples in 23 games, 9-9-1 nine, nine at 3.81 goals against. The ninth round Flames picked in 1986. Last year, he played for the University of Michigan. He led the nation in games played in minutes. An outstanding young prospect for the Salt Lake Gold Eagles, and he's been outstanding of late, winning three of his last four games, giving up his seven goals. Here's the puck loose on the left wing side as the goals try and work to the Salt Lake Blue Line, and Kevin Melrose able to dump to center. Fans cheering because the San Diego Chicken is in attendance here tonight. Puck is loose at the Blue Line, and Rodney Nichols plays at the center. Into the Salt Lake zone, it's Rod Dorman. His shot at a pass save Sharples. The rebound skips to the top of the circle, and the goals play it. Here's Nichols now. For San Diego, former Phoenix Roadrunner, Nichols cuts in the slot, shoots, Dixie save, Charples. And the rebound taken on left wing, and Melrose gently plays it for Mark Bureau. Stolen by Nichols in front, shoots, Charples is sliding, set, rebound in front for Sullivan, and he can't get a stick on it. And the Eagles break out on left wing. Kim Swinney can't play the zone, Sullivan steals, ridden off by Melrose, and the puck is loose to the left of the goal. San Diego putting on all kinds of pressure, and the Eagles have no other choice but to clear it into the San Diego territory. The Eagles have to be careful. They're making a couple of mistakes by not clearing the puck out of their own zone when they get a chance to, Mike. Finally, they do clear it to center, but the goals immediately whip it right back in. Rick Lassard able to play it all the boards all the way to center and deep into the goals territory. 10-20 left in the first. The Eagles with a 1-0 lead on a Mark Bureau shorthanded goal. And the goals played at their own defense in Bannister. Able to slam it right back into the Eagles territory, but right to Scott McCready, who pinballs it to center. Puck bounces on edge. Duguay shoots. He scores! Side, of course, is Mike. When a puck goes outside the blue line, the whole team has to come outside, clear the zone before you can go back in and attack again. The puck went outside the blue line, uh, but Ron Duguay was trapped inside. It bounced back into him. He was all, all by himself. You see how the puck went outside the blue line? Ron Duguay was obviously offside. He has to come out and clear the zone before he can touch the puck again. So there will be no goal. have some new hockey fans, and we've already seen some of the complicated rules in this game as Duguay was clearly trapped in ahead of the play on it offside. Puck is loose now on the right wing side, and Doogie again in the Eagles zone. Smacked by Rick Lassard to the right of Warren Sharple. Simmer into four check. Rich Kurtimas just slams him against the boards. They still push and shove, and finally the puck is loose on left wing. Well, a lot of fierce body contact to the right of the Eagles goal. Rich Turnamas now across the line, stops, drops it in front for Corey Lyons, back in front of the goal, McCready shoots, and he just shot it wide, going for the glove side, and the goals out to her, even with the Hartford Whalers in the NHL, plays but not out, McCready holds it in. Scott McCready, left point for Rick Lassard, his shot caught by Chevrier, he holds on, good scoring chance for Rick Lassard as he let one fly to the left wing point. He scored his third goal of the year last night. Things are really starting to get a physical out here, Mike. Uh, here we go with an altercation on the far side. Charlie Sitter and Rich Chernemans had all started on the far wing, but now Kerry Clark right in the midst of it with a host of uh, goals and eagles right in front of Elaine Chevrier. Randy Buse. If While we have a little altercation, we're going to take a break here. One nothing so Lake. The eagles in the lead, and uh, we'll come right back in just a moment. So many people have enjoyed good times and good food at Talk of the Town Restaurant. We invite you to continue to enjoy in 1991 with our early bird special of the day, Sunday through Thursday. Complete dinner at just 9.50 between 4 and 7 p.m. Talk of the Town features homemade pasta and delicately seasoned entrees to delight the most discriminating taste. Enjoy live piano entertainment Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings. Talk of the Town Restaurant, 723 East, 7200 South. Call for reservations. Open seven days a week. Sunday brunch, 10 to 3. Mike Barrick alongside Randy Dusick here in San Diego. We'll have penalties here, but Randy, uh, it all started in the corner to the right of Sharples when Charlie Simmer and Rich Trimamaz battled, and then it worked in uh, the puck worked into the San Diego zone, and then more developments in front of 
Chevrier. Well, uh, things like that happen, Mike, especially now. This is the 11th of 14 meetings between those two teams. When you play a team for so many times in a row, uh, a lot of animosity builds up between them, uh, and uh, things carry on from uh, games past, and, uh, you know, a couple of high hits here and there just sparks the whole fire again. Rich Chernomaz and Charlie Simmer. Chernomaz for high sticking, Simmer for roughing time of the penalties, 10.33. So the teams will skate with five apiece just without the services of those two players for the next couple of minutes. One off the Eagles here in the first period. And Daryl Olsen able to sky it, poke it right back to the goal zone. Chevrier played last year with the Chicago Blackhawks plays, but Melrose steals. This shot caroms wide, and goal is able to wind to center, and Mark Darrow back checks, and then turns and slams it right back in. Darrow scored the lone goal here in the opening period. San Diego played it for Darren Lowe on the right side. It is center ice for Larry Floyd. He played in Phoenix last year. Skated off to the last moment of the Eagles. Marco Siki plays it on left wing for Darrell Olsen. Goals fiercely in a four check. Eagles play it, but says Steve Martinson able to wind it back. Goal for Larry Floyd. Surveys the track on a center one, but broken up by Mark Darrow and two on one break for Salt Lake. Darrow with Kerry Clark. Darrow went on goal. He stops. He shoots. Hat save made by goal center Elaine Chevrier. Well, a great save by Elaine Chevrier. That time Mark Darrow was looking between his legs and trying to find a little opening there. Eagles Grant plays it. So Bureau has scored a goal tonight. And it's robbed by Chevrier. A chance for the goal zone. Here's Chevrier way out to play it. He holds on with the Golden Eagles streaking in to the San Diego zone. Chevrier has a lot of National Hockey League experience this year. 16 games with a goal, 6 and 9, 4.26 goals against. But 231 career NHL games with New Jersey, Winnipeg, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and Detroit as Chevrier stops Mark Bureau. Uh, great save by Chevrier as he went down into a Butterfly. That's what we call a butterfly when the goaltender spreads his legs out on both sides. Mark Biro is looking for the hole between his legs, but got it up just a little bit too high. Mark Biro likes to shoot high, as we saw on the shorthanded goal here in the first period. Well, that's something that a player practices and practices and practices, and that's really uh, Mark Biro's bread and butter is his high, high over the shoulder or just, a, a, you know, between the legs, Mike. 8.06 left in the first. The Eagles leading 1-0, looking for their seventh consecutive win. Eagles, of course, is here an IHL record for 15 straight wins. Here's the puck loose back of the goal. Eagles in a four check into the San Diego zone. Paul Cruz trying to dig it free. They fight for it to the right of the goal. Cruz after it to Duguay. Plays it for San Diego to the right of the goal. In the four check is Cruz also easily. And they still a battle behind the goal there by Young on the left wing side. Grant it takes over. Plays it free to the San Diego zone for Brian Beasley. Being a cradle down by Duguay, trying to center one. But Dave Coral plays on the left wing side. Todd Harkins, the rookie for Salt Lake. Also, Cruz is the rookie for the Golden Eagles. But San Diego gets free to the Salt Lake zone. On the left wing side, Taylor Hall trying to play it free, but Rick Lassard on left wing. Then Lassard hits the Darcy Norton. The fans here in San Diego uh, cheering on that play as the San Diego goals wind it right back into Eagles territory. Seven minutes left in the first. Glad you've joined us here tonight as the Eagles, the Rick Lassard plays it up in the stands. The Eagles with a one to nothing lead. Things are really, uh, I can sense a lot of uh, uh, physical play coming on here, Mike. And the referee Cassidy is really letting a lot go by. He wants them to play hockey, he wants the flow of the game to keep going here. Face off will be to the right of Warren Sharples. The Eagles with the one nothing advantage. As Randy mentioned, the season series, the Eagles leading 6-4 and have won four of six here in San Diego. Well, I spoke a little bit too soon here now. It appears that one of the Eagles players, Kevin Grant, uh, was a little bit upset, maybe with a missed call that he thought should have been a penalty. Uh, said something to Cassidy, and Cassidy in turn said, I've had enough of that, I don't listen to you anymore, and he's going to put it in the penalty box for two minutes when sportsmanlike. Dave Cassidy works as a linesman in this league as well. He works it quite often in the Midwest uh, in the IHL. The linesman, Joe Maskowitz and Chris Kozik here tonight as the Rick Lussard and Mark Hero discussing things. The penalty grant for unsportsmanlike conduct at 12.56. So San Diego will have their second power play, but of course, the Eagles scored on the first goals man advantage chance. Well, that's a big key here. The Eagles uh, have a, a lot of great uh, penalty killers, and uh, the, the goals power play right now, Mike, is fizzling. At the start and the beginning of the year, that was their uh, big advantage they had over other teams. They were scoring at a high rate, but in the last, uh, I believe, uh, 17 chances, uh, they, they've only scored one goal. So uh, that's something that they're going to have to pick up in order to be successful here tonight. So Rick uh, Lassard uh, talking things over with the referee Dave Cassidy. 7.04 left in the first, one nothing in favor of the Eagles. The goals 
with the man advantage. Bureau to draw up against Sullivan to the right of the goal. Sullivan, a uh, youngster for San Diego at a Boston University. Here is Larry Floyd. He's the trigger man on the point of the power play for Mike Sullivan, the rookie. Shoots, Sharples gets a piece. And then Osiki plays back of the goal. He played on a college championship. The University of Wisconsin. Now the puck is loose on the left wing side. Eagles play it for Tim Sweeney. He can't play the zone. Sullivan steals, but he's shot blocked off by Mark Bureau, and the goals have to go back. 6.40 left in the first. The Eagles with a 1 0 lead, and the puck is cleared into center. The whole play is whistled out here in the opening period. The Eagles with a 1 0 lead here in San Diego, California. Hope you're enjoying it, and we'll come back in just a moment. Hey! Hey! Are you going to R.C. Willis for the big President's Day sale? You mean the one they're having to celebrate our birthday? I'm halfway there already. Through Monday, you'll find incredible savings store-wide. Look for R.C. Willie's giant insert in your paper. And with your new purchase, receive a free Marie Calendar cherry pie free. Why don't we ever get invited to these things? R.C. Willis is now open at 23rd South, 3rd West in Salt Lake. Well, we're back here in San Diego, the famous San Diego chicken with uh, scribblings on the glass uh, to the delight of the fans here in San Diego. He is a former goaltender, Ted Giannoulis, the famous chicken. He's uh, from Canada. And so we have a little bit of a delay here as Warren Sharple is being attended to by Brian Fataffi. Brian has worked in the American Hockey League, the old Eastern Hockey League as he attends to Warren Sharples and uh, uh, Sharples Warren Sharples who uh, wears contacts. That yep. appears to be the problem. It, it looks like it's just slipped out and Brian Pataffi, jack of all trades, uh, is really just trying to help him get a, uh, in a right position. Some strange things here in this game uh, with the contact lenses. Of course, Kevin Melrose lost his earlier in this game. Of course, uh, we have uh, some different aspects of the game of hockey. We're going to take a look at icing right now. Of course, uh, the rules of the game of hockey. Have, uh, are new to some of the fans that are uh, watching the broadcast here tonight. As uh, the Golden Eagles have the lead at 1 0, as the Warren Sharples appears to have his uh, mask uh, back on and skates towards that uh, Salt Lake goal crease. Warren Sharples uh, against the goal has uh, played three games. He's 1 and 1, but he handed San Diego their first ever loss in the NHL. Eagles won 4-3 October 6th. Sharples was the winning goaltender that night in San Diego's first ever setback. Here's the puck loose at center as we're back in action. The Eagles with a 1-0 lead. And the puck dribbles towards the Salt Lake goal. Rick Lassard plays. Trying to uh, wind it, but stolen by Darcy Norton. Shoots, Sharples gets a piece, and he falls on top. A fabulous save by the Eagles netminder. The Eagles are uh, starting to create a lot of problems for themselves. They have control of the puck there, Mike, and they just fail to uh, uh, clear the zone. Rick Lassard fanned on the puck right here. He has the full control. Darcy Norton knocks it out of the air. He comes out in front, and Warren Sharples tries to poke check and misses it, but regains his composure, gets back out in front, and is able to pounce on the puck. But Ron Duge was right there. If that puck was loose, and he was trying to pull it out of him, it would have been a sure goal. Ron Duguay knows how to score goals. Duguay, 12 years in the National Hockey League, 274 red lights. Well, he's no, uh, he, like I said before, Mike, he's probably the most well-rounded player that San Diego has. He's a goal scorer and a great checker, too. And here is Duguay, who, of course, does not wear that helmet against the Salt Lake's Mark Bureau. The Eagles win the draw cleanly. Bureau chops it, but just stolen by Simmer behind the net. Charlie Simmer, 36 years of age for Darcy Norton on this power play. The goal, second chance of the night. Simmer trying to center one, but uh, Kevin Melrose picks an opening and winds it off the shoulder of the Lionswood Maskowitz as the puck is loose as Floyd slams it right back in. Under six minutes left in the first, the Eagles with a 1-0 lead. Immediately, Marco Siki drills it down in the goal's territory. Well, that's what the Eagles have to do. When they get that chance, they have to make sure that they get the puck out of the zone all the way down the ice as best they can. Larry Floyd slams it, and it's uh, deflected up into the stands to stop the play. 5.40 left in the first, 1-0 Eagles. 36 seconds left in the penalty as uh, the fans uh, scatter for that loose puck. And, of course, the Golden Eagles Booster Club part of the attendance uh, here tonight in San Diego. Some 40 members strong as the fans here in San Diego really take to their hockey team. The goals have averaged about 5,500 per game. So they've been very pleased with their attendance figures. Well, they weren't really sure exactly what to expect coming into the league this year, but uh, things have worked out really well for them. Well, it's a power play for another 30 seconds. It's whipped down back behind the Salt Lake goal. Derek Lowe trying to dig it free. Smart after it also, and they fight for it ferociously. 
to the right of Warren Sharples, and they finally freeze it against the boards with 5.25 left in the opening period. The Eagles with a 1-0 lead, and of course, Randy, they'll tie it up. If they freeze it on the boards for two or three seconds, they'll tie it up for a face-off, and that's what's going to take place right now. Well, when the, when the puck's frozen up on the boards, the longer that the referee lets it go on and the poking and jabbing, it just creates the more problems, uh, prob probably penalties and maybe even major penalties. So it's a, in the referee's best interest to keep control of the game to blow those down a little bit quicker, especially at the start of the game. Warren Sharples with a new mask uh, this season. Here is the goal forward. Larry Floyd a shot. He shoots it over top of the net. Floyd possesses one of the hardest shots in this league. As the goals wheel and deal, Floyd again tries to work it free, but it's blocked off by his former teammate, Rich Turamaz. And then on left wing, Daryl Olsen slams it down into the goal zone. The Eagles kill off another one here in San Diego. Well, uh, the, the goals, uh, their, their power play woes continue here, Mike. Uh, I don't know when they're going to turn it around. They just have to get back to the basics, get it to the middle, and shoot it at the net. Big penalty killing by the Golden Eagles, and here they come again. Harkins on right wing, unable to break free. And McKinnis plays for San Diego. Rick Lassard at his own blue line controls. The Eagles with a one nothing lead, and Lassard bounces it right back to the goal's territory. Brian Deasley, out of the University of Michigan, plays it right back to the side of the goal. Here's Harkins for Salt Lake, tries to center one, but the goal's able to work it free into the neutral zone. Charlie Zimmer in against Kevin Melrose, whirling around, tries to kick it free, but right on the stick of Brian Deasley, who leads for Cruz in the center. Goals wind it right back in. It's here in San Diego, California, the Eagles with a 1 0 lead. Marco Siki on the wing, able to play at the center, and then Charlie Sinner circles back for San Diego. Here's Sinner, who played parts of three seasons with Solid. Checked on the play, then Bannister for San Diego leaves it free. Four zone defense, Ron Duguay into the neutral zone. Here's Duguay smartly in his center. Being hacked by Salt Lake, so Siki winds it right back into the Salt Lake zone, and the Eagles play at the center. It's a 1 0 Salt Lake lead. Goals try and work it for the forward Darcy Norton in Norton in a four check, but Bureau plays but not out. Al Tour steals, shoots, stick save by Sharples, and then Salt Lake clear the zone and all the way down into San Diego territory. They rule no icing as the goals could have played the puck. It's no icing if they feel it could have been stopped on the way into the defensive territory. And the defenseman Darren Bannister, a Calgary native, able to play it up the right side. The Eagles with a 1 0 lead. Very entertaining first period hit from San Diego. Bannister it right back against the boards. It just squirts right to Tim Sweeney. However, Sullivan steals for San Diego, but then McCready takes it off his stick. Here's Scott McCready in his first year with Salt Lake. Back to Mark Bureau in his fourth season to the right-wing side and chance for Salt Lake Samar, but the shot is deflected up into the stands and a stoppage of play. The Eagles with a 1-0 lead as the play going from blue line to blue line. There's a lot of good action here right now, Mike. A really good flow. There's been uh, not very many whistles, and uh, it allows both teams to uh, skate, to get some plays going, and uh, get some good scoring opportunities on each goalie. With a win tonight, the Eagles can be one of only four teams in this league to have an above record over 500. Only Kalamazoo, Peoria, and Indianapolis have that distinction. Tim Swinney for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, an outstanding player tonight for the Golden Eagles. Having been sent down by the Calgary Flames, Sweeney tonight for Salt Lake in game number eight. He has 11 points in his first seven. Sweeney, a very important player to this team. He's been all the last year in Salt Lake. Eagles says so Warren Sharples plays it as we're back to action. Kevin Grant plays for Salt Lake and scoops it high in the air in the center. Bulls take over on the left wing side. It's punched uh, for Martinson into the Salt Lake zone. Martinson with low, low shoots it just wide. He went for the short side. Here is the team Martin trying to center one, but Rich Turnamaz able to angle the center. Turnamaz flies into the San Diego territory. Stick handles it in. He shoots. And Chevrolet, I believe, got a piece that ricochets wide as the net has been dislodged. Rich Turnamaz with a couple of artful moves into the goals of the territory. Well, great, uh, great plays by Rich Mass. And uh, Mike, I'll tell you, Rich Turnamaz has one of the hardest shots in this league. As he comes in, he, act, he just uh, makes a quick move around uh, Larry Floyd. Uh, who's not normally a defenseman, so it's tougher for uh, Larry Floyd to defend against a forward coming down on him because he's not used to it. Churchmass cuts in the middle, gets a great scoring opportunity to the net, and then uh, uh, I believe it was Tim Sweeney driving to the net, uh, with, uh, touched the side of the net and pulled it off his moorings, and that's why the whistle went. Rich Churchmass, 159 career goals in his Salt Lake uniform. That's number four all time. His next goal will tie him with uh, Scott McLeod, who had 160. That's regular season and playoffs. A tremendous career for Rich Turnamans. And of course, Randy, you uh, 
most of the time his center iceman. Well, I've had a, a great pleasure playing with Rich, and, and uh, really he makes the game easy because he knows so much about it and where to be at the right times. Here is Charlie Simmer on the left wing side for San Diego, trying to dig it free, and they finally freeze it with 2.17 left in the first period. Todd Harkins and Charlie Simmer, Marco Siki also battling along the boards as we have the San Diego Chicken here in San Diego. The fans always uh, enjoy him. He, of course, is from San Diego, uh, Ted Giannoulis, the original San Diego Chicken, so he's uh, quite often seen here in San Diego. Darrell Olson took that last shot, and we have a little story about Darrell Olson from the game last night. He actually put a shot, Randy, into his own net in the game last night, the second period against the San Diego Goals. Well, it was really an unfortunate thing. He took a little bit of hazing from his uh, teammates all uh, day today, but uh, he felt bad about it. Uh, fortunately, it really didn't hurt the outcome of the game. Uh, uh, just something that, uh, that happens over the course of a game. Here's a chance for Salt Lake, but it's blocked off of the defense, and Coral plays on left wing. Another member of the uh, Phoenix Roadrunners from last season. Ron Duguay plays an original New York Rangers first round pick in 1976. Duguay checked off with the blue line. He appears to be shaken up as the puck is loose at the San Diego blue line. He gets up slowly. Eagles take over on the right side. Osiki tries to push it right back behind the goal and then races after it himself. Osiki, the rookie, out of the University of Wisconsin at San Diego control. 1-0 Salt Lake lead. A minute 40 left in the first period. On the left wing side, Charlie Simmers centers. Sharples gets a piece and the net has been dislodged into the Salt Lake territory as Simmer working down the left wing side, but the perils of not wearing a helmet to the Ron Duguay. Well, I, I don't think that's a problem. He was a questionable starter here tonight, Mike. He has a very bad groin, and as he went down, he, he went on, the, uh, on a all fours, and he really grabbed his uh, upper part of his leg, so it appears that it may, uh, he may have aggravated again during that play. Uh, as we watch him come up the ice, Paul Cruz is uh, pursuing him here, and he gets a stick around the outside of him, and there it is right there. Duguay stretches his leg out right there, and probably uh, just aggravated again. He's on all fours and obviously in a lot of pain. Of course, he banged his head in a game here against Salt Lake earlier this season. Rick Lassard crashed uh, against the boards, uh, gave him a big hit, and for a while there, it appeared that he might be out for quite some time. He came back the next game, but he's uh, definitely taking a gamble. Here's a shot to, by Darren Bannister going over top of the net and clear right back to the side of the goal. Loose in front, Sharples able to hug the post and hold on. Of course, Ron Duguay can play without a helmet because he was playing prior to a rule, I believe it was 1980, in which they banned the players without helmets, but players that were under contract prior to that time are allowed to play without the helmet. Exactly, and, and some people will say, well, why why wouldn't you just put it on? Everybody wears a helmet, sticks are up high all the time. Well, it's just a matter of uh, comfort and uh, the way he feels out there. He feels it's restricted to him. Here's a chance for San Diego, loose in front, a quick backhand by Nichols, steered by Sharp as he holds on, but now more pushing and shoving in front of the Salt Lake goal. In the middle of it, Robbie Nichols, Martin Samard is right there, Rick Lassard having a hold of a San Diego player, Rod Dolman. He's a pretty strong customer as the line has been trying to separate. But, uh, you know, the tempers will fly, especially when you play back-to-back -back games. The Eagles winning last night 5-3. to three. Well, a lot of that carries on over, as you said, Mike, from the previous night before. But uh, it also it's also coupled with how many times these two teams play together. Uh, Scott McCready, who's been in and out of this Eagles lineup, is really trying to make a good impression on uh, Bobby Francis. And he feels that he's going to have to play tough to stay in this lineup. Robbie Nichols uh, just sort of danced by him a little bit there. Maybe it made him look bad, and, and uh, he doesn't want to, uh, Bobby Francis to see any part of that. So he wants him to know that, hey, I know I made a mistake. I'm coming back. Don't do it again. There's a big push here. Plus the players were separated on the far side. Robbie Nichols and Scott McCready want to go. They're in a headlock right along the board. Scott McCready, he's missed the last six games for Salt Lake, and big Robbie Nichols scoring off against the boards. McCready gets his helmet off, then throws a couple of left hands. They're just so tight over there, they can't uh, uh, get any punches. But now McCready's trying to throw some over the top. Nickel throws him down to the delight of the San Diego fans. The line's been trying to separate. We'll show you uh, how these uh, penalties and some of these fights sometimes begin during our intermission, but they squared off uh, pretty heavily on the far side as the players were escaping towards that penalty box. Well, uh, uh, things happen. There was a little bit of talking here and there, back and forth. Uh, Robbie Nichols is a real uh, disturber for this team. He knows what his job is. He's trying to fire his guys up, get them going, 
and that's the way he feels he should do it. Uh, Scott McCready, on the other hand, for the Golden Eagles, as I said before, he wants to make an impression out there too. So uh, all this uh, came about uh, with only a minute and 23 left in this period. Uh, sometimes people say, well, why do they go get penalties when they know they're going to sit in a penalty box? But uh, this game of hockey is a very aggressive game. Uh, there's a lot of body checking and uh, things like that happen. A lot of animosity is built up. Well, it was Robbie Nichols. He's the guy that led the IHL in penalty minutes with the Kalamazoo Wings with a total of 406 in 1985-86. Scott McCready, his first year with the Golden Eagles. Uh, he is a 23-year-old uh, out of Calgary, Alberta. Played junior hockey with the Medicine Hat Tigers in the Western Hockey League. And uh, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, uh, Scott McCready involved with Robbie Nichols. Of course, uh, Randy, in this particular case, we'll see if there's a, a power play advantage here. But quite often when there are fighting penalties, the teams will end up uh, just uh, skating uh, five skaters apiece just without the services of the two players involved when you have a five-minute fighting penalty. That, that's if, if the referee is going to whistle uh, even penalties for both sides. Usually there's an instigating penalty. Whoever instigated or started the fight is going to draw an additional two minutes. And uh, their team will be shorthanded. Uh, because of uh, the five-minute penalties, each team getting five minutes each, uh, they're, they're going to lose it. They'll still play at five minutes each. Only if there is extra uh, minutes tacked on to another team will they play shorthanded for that amount of time. Eagles have the lead at one nothing. Dave Cassidy trying to sort things out on the far side. The Eagles with the lead, as mentioned, one to nothing. Salt Lake will be home tomorrow night against Kansas City, 7 p.m. at the Salt Palace. Military Dependence Night and Family Night will be February 20th. The Eagles against the Muskegon Lumberjack. Uh, up to 10 members of your family can get into the game for just 20 bucks. This, uh, the famous San Diego Chicken delighting the crowd here tonight. The only goal, Mark Bureau's 35th of the year, 6.40 the time, a shorthanded tally and a 1-0 lead. Randy, sometimes uh, with secondary altercations, it takes a while for the officials to sort things out. They want to make sure they get the correct call the first time uh, uh, to keep things sorted out. Well, uh, the, what the referee will do, he'll consult with his linesman to make sure he's got the story straight that what he uh, saw is actually what happened. And then after they uh, collaborate and get everything straightened out, he'll go and call the penalties. And, uh, and from there, the teams will either be uh, full strength or uh, shorthanded. And the only players allowed to speak to the referee, Rich Turnham as an Al Tour, the respective captains, all the other players must uh, be at their uh, players' bench area. The uh, captains and sometimes the alternate captains are allowed to talk to the referees. That's why only Turnham as a Tour is stationed by Dave Cassidy. Well, it, it, that helps the referee out too. Uh, you know, he doesn't want everybody running over there yelling in his ear, uh, say, I saw this, I saw that, you said this, and this and that. He just wants two people. He is going to straighten it all out between the two in uh, turn, they can go back to their bench, tell their coach exactly what the referee said, and get it all straightened out from there. Nine minutes uh, assessed against McCready. We'll touch on the penalties in just a moment here in San Diego. Mike O'Connell, the head coach of the San Diego Goals, uh, is trying to sort things out for his team. And we're waiting uh, on the announcements for the San Diego penalties. As of right now, they don't have any minor penalties assessed on the scoreboard. It's Bobby Francis, the head coach of the Golden Eagles, looks on and very vocal behind the players. We'll have a feature on Bob Francis during our second intermission, but he is very vocal, uh, Randy, uh, at the Salt Lake players' bench. Well, he's really a, a players' type coach. Uh, he demands respect from the players, but, and in return, uh, he just wants you to work hard. If you can give your, your all 110% every single night, uh, that's all he wants. But he's concerned about uh, inconsistent players and things like that, and uh, he's really a, a good motivator, gets the guys working hard, and you can see that now the team is really on a roll. Well, we have a lot of penalties here, all at 18.37 of this uh, first period. Rod Dahlman, two minutes for roughing for San Diego. Robbie Nichols, five for fighting. Scott McCready, so Lake, five for fighting, and a two-minute minor for roughing. Also, McCready picks up an unsportsmanlike conduct minor. The other penalty, so Lake's uh, Rick Lassard, a roughing minor. Rod Dahlman picks up an extra 10. Robbie Nichols, two for instigating and two for roughing. So with all those penalties, the teams are at even strength. The Eagles clear it right back into the San Diego zone, and the netminder himself, Chevrolet, uh, sets it up back there. So the Eagles with a 1-0 lead, lots of penalties here towards the end of the first period. And Kevin Melrose spins back of his goal for Salt Lake with under a minute to go in the period. On left wing for the 20-year-old, Corey Lyons plays to center. Goals wind it right back in, and Salt Lake's Grant able to play it for Bureau on the boards, but stolen by Martinson. His shot blocked off, and the Eagles play it to center. 
under a minute to go, as mentioned in the period. The goal slammed it right back in, and Samard played on the right side. Up the middle for the rookie, C.J. Young, into the San Diego zone. Young across for Mark Bureau, back on the give and go to Young. He scores! And he crashes into the end boards while scoring the goal. Great setup from Bureau, and the Golden Eagles have a 2-0 lead. Well, this is a very key goal for the Golden Eagles, Mike. They're uh, probably going to go into the dressing room after the first period with a two-goal lead now, and that's uh, a nice cushion to have. It was a great two-way passing play as we uh, Mark Bureau crosses a blue line here. He knows that C.J. Young is going to be breaking towards him, and he cuts in the middle, and he just feathers a pass over there. He knows it's, uh, it's just like it, just putting it into an area. He knows that C.J. Young is going to be there. He's not sure when. It's just a, a great timing kind of play for him to be able to lay the puck in there, and uh, you know, just by judging how fast C.J. Young is going, how fast he's got to pass that puck, and it was a great passing play. C.J. Young, the 22-year-old from Wyvern, Massachusetts, gives Salt Lake a 2-0 lady. Played at Harvard on the left wing side, McKinnis a shot. That's blocked for the defense. Now McKinnis another chance. That bounces wide. Here's Young who scored that goal. Able to lead out for Salt Lake. Off the middle for Rich Turnamaz. Angles in against the defense. On goal. Tries to swivel past the San Diego defenseman over there. And as soon as Martinson winds to center, that's it. The buzzer sounds signaling the end of the first period. The Eagles with a 2 0 lead. Well, a great period by the Golden Eagles there. They've uh, really established them th themselves. They came out, they started playing physical. They had a lot of great scoring chances, and uh, they buried two of, the, two of their chances to go up two to nothing here in the first period. They're going to go in now to the dressing room, take a little bit of a breather, sit down and relax for uh, uh, probably about 15 minutes while the Zamboni's out, and uh, just talk about what kind of strategy they're going to have for the next period. Well, the Eagles have the lead at two to nothing, and uh, we're going to go down to... We're going to go down to Mike Rungi in just a moment uh, towards the uh, near side, towards the runway area. Of course, the Eagles with the lead 2 to nothing on goals by Mark Bureau and C.J. Young. Bob Francis and Jamie Hislop, the two coaches for the Golden Eagles, is uh, towards that uh, dressing room area. And the Golden Eagles, C.J. Young scored in that second goal. Well, uh, Cabrier was really down and out there. He came sliding across to try and cover as much as he could. But uh, by doing that, he left the whole top open half. And, and C.G. Young was just able to put it over top of him. Okay, we're going to go downstairs to Mike Rungi of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. Mike Rungi almost in the locker room with Coach Bob Francis. Bob, Mark Bureau had a great short-handed goal there early in the game. Yeah, he really did, Mike. He read the play well. Tim Sweeney applied a lot of pressure in their D, and they went D to D pass. And Mark was uh, in a good lane, he intercepted, put it home, and he made a heck of a play to C.J. Young's uh, goal. C.J. went to the net, Mark put it right on his tape. They just don't give up. They keep coming at you, those Salt Lake Golden Eagles. You've got them moving well in this particular game. And the Gulls are throwing everything at you, including the San Diego Chicken. Yeah, they're, they're working hard, but uh, we're playing a patient game right now. We're trying to eliminate the quality scoring chances, and we've had to capitalize a couple of ours, so we'll see how the second period goes. Thanks, Coach. Bobby Francis, and we'll be back up to you, Mike Barrick. Well, Randy Busick, the Golden Eagles with a 2 nothing lead, a great to first period here. Well, it was very exciting for the fans to watch what was going on there. They had a little bit of everything. They had uh, uh, some penalties and uh, some scoring opportunities. Okay, we'll come right back. The Eagles up 2 to nothing here in San Diego, California. We'll be right back. The 49th Street Galleria presents the Safari Club birthday party. For only $6 per person, your child can have a fantastic party with your choice of roller skating, 18 holes of miniature golf, batting at Casey's, or bowling in the Bowling Green. Your party package also includes six tokens for each guest, your choice of hot dogs or pizza, along with soft drinks and ice cream. And the Galleria entertainers back a barrel of fun, all for only $6 per person. For reservations, call the Galleria now, 263-2987. Some activities subject to availability and some restrictions may apply. Enjoy an evening at Partners, Ogden or Holiday, famous for truly unique atmosphere and really good food. Partners specialize in fresh seafood and tender aged beef, featuring our own homemade recipes. We serve dollar-saving early bird specials from 5 to 6.30 p.m. every Monday through Thursday. Choose from six of our most popular entrees, complete dinners at lunchtime prices. Enjoy the best for less at Partners, 337 31st Street in Ogden and 4668 South Holiday Boulevard, Holiday. Another collection agency demanding more money. But we just don't have it. And the bills keep piling up. Immediate relief is available. At the law firm of Lewin T. Burton & Associates, we can file a Chapter 13 within hours to stop lawsuits, garnishments, and foreclosures. Stop creditor phone calls and relieve the pressure today. Call now for a free consultation to learn more. Call 278-0404, Lewin T. Burton & Associates, 278-0404.
Nothing brings your face to life like fashion eyewear from Night and Optical. enjoying a two to nothing lead after the first period we're having a lot of fun here at the san diego sports arena in san diego california but even though we're having a lot of fun here the world goes on and let's go back to the studio now for news from the persian gulf CNN Headline News, I'm Lynn Russell. U.S. military officials say if they had known civilians were in the building, they wouldn't have bombed it. But Iraq calls it a well-planned crime that killed 500 innocent civilians. The United States denies that building in Baghdad was only a bomb shelter, insisting it was a heavily fortified command and control center. It says the civilians inside it may have been planted there by Saddam Hussein to provoke international outrage. Crews were still pulling charred bodies from the shelter 14 hours after the pre-dawn attack. The White House says it is not and will not target civilians. The loss of civilian lives in time of war is a truly tragic consequence. It saddens everyone to know that innocent people may have died in the course of military conflict. America treats human life as our most precious value. That is why even during this military conflict, in which the lives of our servicemen and women are at risk, we will not target civilian facilities. We will continue to hit only military targets. The bunker that was attacked last night was a military target. So far, there has been no sign of flexibility on the United States. They are getting sort of uh, mad with the uh, use of force with their BV-52 and with their uh, the Mahawk uh, missiles, and they seem to be enjoying it. The bombing is putting Allied commanders on the defensive. They say they regret the loss of civilian life, but they can prove the building was indeed being used for military purposes. Rick Salinger reports. To the Allied coalition, this was not known as a civilian air raid shelter. I'm here to tell you that it was a military bunker. It was a command and control facility. It's one of many that has been used by the Iraqi government uh, throughout this operation. He said it had been an air raid shelter in 1985, but it was upgraded to a hardened shelter for command and control. It was targeted before the war. The facility became more active two to three weeks ago. Radio transmissions had been monitored from here with military operations in Kuwait. Military sources here say it is contrary to Saddam Hussein's policy to allow civilians at military sites. So there is the thought, if not the suggestion, that perhaps they were permitted inside knowing full well the shelter might be hit. Rick Salinger, CNN, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. At times I can't forget the hero who's my friend. I know that it's with similar commercial loans, similar leasing programs, plus a myriad of other similar financial services. So when it comes to business banking, how do you choose a bank that'll really deliver? May we suggest you look to the one who stands a little taller, a little stronger. I did. Of course I did. With Hardy's Family Value Menu, Mom and Dad can feed themselves and their four kids for under $10. Dad can feed himself and his son a basketball team for under $10. Mom can feed herself, her three kids, a neighbor's kid, and a kid she doesn't even know for under $10. Hardy's Family Value Menu is designed for families who want a lot of delicious food for not a lot of money. Like hamburgers for 59 cents, cheeseburgers for 69 cents, and hot dogs for 79 cents. Hardy's Family Value Menu, the return of good old family values. Hey, you can eat that last Kiesel Sales would like to help you with your gift-giving ideas. Choose from our large selection of Zenith televisions, video recorders, and camcorders. Kiesel Sales also has the finest selection of home appliances, featuring Maytag, Amana, Hotpoint, and Gen Air. 
Kiesel Sales can help make your purchase easier with 90-day interest-free financing, layaway, and free next-day delivery. Kiesel Sales, 3109 Washington Boulevard, Ogden. The new International Luggage Center offers the lowest prices in the West on suitcases, garment bags, carry-ons, and attaches. Featuring the finest in Samsonite luggage. Where you'll find the luggage professionals and a factory-authorized repair center. The new International Luggage at 328 South State, Salt Lake. Oh, the Salt Lake Golden Eagles here in San Diego, California. Have a lead of uh, 2 to nothing. Randy Busick alongside Randy Green to first period. The Eagles and a Mark Bureau shorthanded goal. And how about the C.J. Young goal late? In the third, hit a Mark Bureau uh, uh, play uh, in the uh, first period to get Salt Lake a one nothing lead, and then Young score in the second goal. Well, two great scoring uh, uh, plays by the Golden Eagles, both uh, uh, with Mark Bureau figuring, figuring in on on uh, on the first shorthanded goal. It was great anticipation by him. Tim Sweeney forced their defenseman to cough, or it was Charlie Zimmer actually, not normally a defenseman, but who was back on the play, forced him to cough the puck over to Mark Bureau. He stepped in, and when you give him a chance like that, he's going to usually put it away. Fantastic to see last night the Eagles winning 5-3. to three. They've won six consecutive games, and it seems game in and game out, they find a way to score goals and pick up victories. Well, uh, it's very key. I think the key to their uh, uh, success right now with their uh, streak that they're on right now is, is the quick jump that they come out, and uh, they gain a lead early, and, and they're playing very well with the lead. Well, Randy, uh, of course, uh, the rules of hockey always confusing to fans. Uh, we had a chance to go out to the practice at Bonneville Ice Skating Rink in uh, Bonneville, Utah, and we take a look with Rich Turnamaz, the captain of the Golden Eagles, describing some key penalties. One of the most common minor penalties in the game is hooking. That's when uh, the player skates up the ice of the puck and gets hooked behind from the opponent. Okay, another common penalty is when the opponent player comes into the guy with the puck and gets a stick up above the guy's shoulders, up around the facial area. That's known as high sticking. Another frequently called penalty by the referees is when a player comes in from behind, gets a stick up, and cross-checks them above the back or around the shoulders. That penalty is known as cross-checking. Another stick infraction called by the referees is slashing. That's when the player comes up from behind and just whacks the fella in the pants or the knee pads with a stick. The penalties that we just showed you often result in uh, why majors are, are always started uh, for the reason of uh, having your stick too high while a guy hits them. And consequently, the guy gets a little upset. They turn around, and that's how majors usually start. <laughs> well, Randy, uh, an example of the fighting penalties. We saw that in the first period with Scott McCready and Robbie Nichols of San Diego. But uh, sometimes the boys will drop the gloves and go. I think Harry Clark and Darren Banks really enjoyed uh, dropping the gloves and, uh, and going at it when it was for fun. Only. Well, they did have a lot of fun making that little piece. But of uh, course, uh, Mike, uh, when they're out on the ice, uh, uh, tempers start to flare, and uh, they're not—they're—they're they're playing for real out there. They're playing for keeps, and uh, you know uh, things like that happen. It's a big game of uh, a lot of intimidation has a big part of this game, and uh, physical awareness is—you uh, know—can win hockey games. So, uh, want, uh, team wants to make themselves uh, be present and accounted for at all times. Of course, uh, we saw the major penalties, but we also saw some examples of the minor penalties, Randy. And when you have the minor penalties, you're shorthanded for two minutes, uh, unless uh, as the Eagles uh, uh, did uh, score a goal scored a shorthanded goal and of course if the uh, offensive team scores that is it on a minor penalty. Well as soon as the offensive team scores uh, the penalty becomes nullified and, it, and both teams go back uh, to even strength. Uh, it's a very fine line. The referee is the one who uh, eventually calls the penalties down. Uh, the problem is uh, you know, uh, it's only one person out there calling all the action, and there's, uh, the pace is so quick and so fast, uh, he obviously can't see everything. So sometimes uh, the crowd reacts when they think a penalty should have been called, uh, but uh, it's up to the referee's discretion, and sometimes he just doesn't see it. Of course, uh, the penalty is such a key aspect of uh, this game of hockey. The Eagles have a 2 to nothing lead here in San Diego. The Eagles looking for their seventh consecutive win, and uh, we'll uh, take a break here in San Diego. The Eagles leading 2 to nothing here from the Sports Arena in San Diego, California. We can't put much money down, but we've been looking around.
West off I-15 on 33rd South or 700 West for once in a lifetime savings on the largest selection of custom vans and GMC trucks west of the Mississippi. Salt Lake Valley GMC is still under construction, but our giant inventory is already here, and we're passing the high-volume savings on to you now. Choose from over 300 custom vans, 100 new GMC trucks, and 100 used vehicles. We're not far from wherever you are. Get off I-15 on 33rd South and head west to 700 West and Salt Lake Valley GMC now. Bankruptcy. It can ruin your life. I wasn't making enough money to pay my bills. Getting further behind and my creditors were on me, almost filed bankruptcy. But I heard it would stay on my credit record for 10 years. It would be tough to buy things on credit. Consumer Credit Counseling Service, the best alternative to bankruptcy. They solve debt problems by working with the creditors to avoid bankruptcy. Call Consumer Credit Counseling Service today. I'm glad I did. A savage murder. You know who killed him? And Charles Bronson's out to make a punishment fit the crime. Looks like we got a live one here. Sinister blood feud does kill us. We gotta make it look like an accident. Leaves Brunson caught in the middle of a massacre. That's crazy. This idea of murdering people to save them. For the first time on television, Charles Bronson, Messenger of Death. We are 14 got a Tuesday at 7. Welcome back, uh, everybody. Uh, this is Mike Barrett here in San Diego, California. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles having a lead of two to nothing over the San Diego Gulls. We took a look at some of the common penalties in this game of hockey, but there is a strategy to this game. And of course, uh, one of those uh, pieces of strategy is when you work out of your own end. Well, of course, uh, the game that happens so fast, it's uh, you really have to play it by ear sometimes. But uh, we do practice a lot of things. Uh, here's a breakout here. A quick break up, moving the puck up, a little bit of interference going down in on the goalie and getting a good, good scoring opportunity and putting, putting it past the goalie there. Of course, that is the example of uh, what we call a breakout. It's when the defenseman will actually watch the wing, throw it up to the year forward, and then he does all the work from there. It's just a matter of reading the play. Uh, when a person has a puck, there's so many things that he has to worry about. He has to worry about who's attacking on him, whereabouts he is on the ice, where his players are, and where he's going to move the puck. He really has to think about it before he gets the puck, so he has a good idea of what he wants to do with it when he gets it. Of course, uh, as we've uh, discussed, it's not really a haphazard as far as the passing is concerned. Well, the Eagles have a 2 to nothing lead here in San Diego. It's Mark Bureau and C.J. Young have scored the goals. And Randy, not only have the Eagles performed on the ice, it's just been a fantastic season. Uh, Salt Lake in sole possession of second place. But when you come to a Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey game, there's always more than the shots and the saves. As we saw uh, last Friday night at the Salt Palace, the famous and the infamous, I should say, bikini night. Well, of course, uh, the fans are have, uh, just have a lot of fun uh, with this uh, event, especially every year. It's always a great turnout uh, uh, for people to come out and uh, watch. It's just a part of a little bit of a show uh, for the fans. Uh, hockey is a, a small part of it, but it's just a, a thing where everybody comes out and uh, has a good time, and it's been very entertaining. Over 9,000 fans at the Salt Lake, uh, the Salt Palace Friday night. The Eagles have had the Bikini Night Contest the last six seasons, and they have uh, won all four since they've entered the IHL. We took a look at the end as far as the winners are concerned, but it's always a fun night. Well, you know, that bikini contest is so popular and has worked so well that other teams around the league have uh, adopted that into their own schedule, and they're having a lot of fun with it, too. Well, it's always fun at the South Palace. The Golden Eagles have a 2 to nothing lead. At the end of uh, 20 minutes of play, the Eagles with a tremendous shorthanded goal by Mark Bureau and C.J. Young at the tail end of the period also scored here in San Diego. The Gulls actually uh, have been playing hockey here for a long, long time, Randy. They played in the old Western Hockey League. The Eagles and the Gulls battled. Then there was a long absence of hockey here in San Diego, and now the rivalry is back between the Eagles and the Gulls. Five of the games this year have been decided by just a single goal. Well, it's really important that San Diego has come in to this league uh, because it has added a lot to this Western division through rivalries and uh, more games played, and it gives the fans back home uh, a good association with the players uh, from such a close city. Well, the Eagles scored two goals in the first parade, and Mark Bureau scored one of them. He caught that uh, pass there that Charlie Simmer tried to move over to his uh, partner, Taylor Hall, there, intercepted it, walked in, 
and uh, put it high over the sh uh, glove hand of uh, Lane Chevrier. Mark Bureau's uh, scoring his 35th of the year, his uh, league leading seven shorthanded goal. And then the Eagles, late in the period, scored again. Well, it was another great play uh, by uh, Mark Bureau. He's got the puck, and like I said before, he's thinking about so many things at this point. Where his players are, who's attacking on him, and how fast he has to pass that puck over to his, uh, his uh, 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 right winger uh, for him to get it in the clear. And C.J. Young uh, just timed it perfectly and put it over a uh, flopping Lane Chevrier to put the Eagles up 2 to nothing. And just a tremendous uh, period for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles hockey team, a 2 to nothing lead. Mark Bureau scoring, and of course, C.J. Young also for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. In just a few moments, we'll have our second period of action, and it should be uh, another interesting one, especially with Salt Lake scoring the first two goals in this game. Well, things are getting physical right now. Uh, a little bit of uh, frustration may have set in on the, on the goals uh, part, but uh, uh, they're not out of this game yet. It may be 2 to nothing. But they've worked hard through the first period, and uh, one goal can change the whole face of this, this game tonight. We well, hope you're enjoying the action. The Eagles with a 2 to nothing lead, and we'll come back in just a moment. The Eagles with a 2 to nothing lead over the goals here in Paw Computers 845 South Main and Bountiful specialize in contemporary computer classes. Expert instructors use state-of-the-art techniques to teach you how to use your computer. You see the instructor's entries and compare with your own hands-on terminal. Train to use Macintosh or IBM compatible computers. Register now for convenient beginning, intermediate, or advanced classes for word processing, spreadsheets, even desktop publishing. Call 295-2299 now and get a free t-shirt and mouse pad with your registration. Paw Computers in Bountiful. The 49th Street Galleria presents the Safari Club Birthday Party. For only $6 per person, your child can have a fantastic party with your choice of roller skating, 18 holes of miniature golf, batting at Casey's, or bowling in the bowling green. Your party package also includes six tokens for each guest, your choice of hot dogs or pizza, along with soft drinks and ice cream, and the Galleria Entertainers Back, a barrel of fun, all for only $6 per person. For reservations, call the Galleria now, 263-2987. Some activities subject to availability and some restrictions may apply. Welcome back, everyone. Mike Barrick alongside Randy Music uh, here in San Diego, California. The Eagles with a 2 to nothing lead over the San Diego Gulls. Uh, Randy, it's just so fun to be here in San Diego. The fans in Salt Lake getting a chance to watch the broadcast. Of course, listening as well on the Golden Eagles radio network. But it's real fun to be here in San Diego as the Eagles take on the Gulls. Well, it's really a great exposure for the team uh, to be able to uh, show a game back home to all the fans. And uh, it gets the fans a chance to really track their team. Uh, sometimes it's hard to follow it on the radio because you're not able to see exactly what's going on. Uh, you know, but with the TV there uh, live and uh, just able to sit back and enjoy all the action. I want to thank the people from Channel 14 in Salt Lake and also KMGR and KLO radio stations in Salt Lake City and Ogden, Utah. Here we go here in the second for the Eagles with a 2 to nothing lead and C.J. Young smacks it over top of the goal. Ritz Turnaman trying to dig it free. However, the goal on left wing Steve Martinson able to wind it on the left wing side and all the way to center. Here's Kerry Clark. Last year, played with the Phoenix Roadrunners and playing in his first season with Salt Lake on the left wing side for Kevin Melrose. And he slides to the goal's defense and all the way to center where Kevin Grant able to play it deep into the goal's territory. And Elaine Chevry able to set it up back of the goal. Kerry Clark first being a four check. And then it's wound up the right side for San Diego. Ahead at center ice is Larry Floyd. Into the Salt Lake zone, the leading point scorer for the goal. Shoots one, and it's blocked off at the defense by Marco Siki. Then Sharples himself trying to fiddle with it. Back of the goal, Clark after it, tries to dig it free, and finally Swinney comes up with the puck. The Golden Eagle have a lead of 2 to nothing, And Tim Swinney with 97 points last year for Salt Lake. In for Rich Trubaz, but it's offside at the defense. And, of course, if a player precedes the puck into the offensive zone, it's ruled an offside. Well, sometimes uh, yeah, you'll see uh, somebody drag their leg or something, Micah, to prevent that offside from being called. You know, half of your body can be over the blue line, but just as long as there's a certain part of it that's left behind before that puck goes over, the referees will uh, wave off the offside. Why they join us here from the San Diego Sports Arena. The Eagles on a goal by Mark Bureau and a tally by C.J. Young have the lead at 2 to nothing. Mike Sullivan against Mark Bureau, and this is a matchup for Mike O'Connell. I talked to him this morning. And he said that he likes to have Sullivan on Mark Bureau. He's a very good defensive player, Sullivan. And, of course, O'Connell is aware of Mark Bureau's talents offensively. Here's Tim Swinney for Salt Lake. Tries to jam it free. Ridden off the puck by the defenseman, Scott Young. Now play back at the goal. Eagles into forecheck. He's still trying to jam it free. And finally, the goal come up with the puck. Into the center ice area is the rookie, Sullivan. 
with the veteran Sinner. Sullivan moving in. Nice to center one right through the goal crease, but uh, Sinner couldn't get his stick on it. Here's Charlie Sinner, who played with the Los Angeles Kings. Twice scored over 50 goals. To the left wing side. Young now for San Diego. His shot blocked off by Sweeney and Mark Bureau. Able to barrel the center. We have a penalty coming up against San Diego. A delayed penalty. Smart on goal. Poked away by Chevry. And as soon as Young for San Diego touches the puck, Dave Cassidy will call a minor penalty against San Diego. It looks like he's going to call a hooking penalty, Mike. Uh, I think it was Tim Sweeney who got hauled down there from behind. Uh, here's as well. Mark Bureau just dumps it almost this is like an alley-oop in a basketball another timing play uh, to Martin Smart almost exactly like the, what he did uh, with CJ Young earlier in the first period for a goal. Uh, great play there just stopped by Elaine Chagrier. It's a hooking minor against Scott Young 157 the time of the penalty and a two to nothing so late lead a chance to work in the power play the Eagles rank number three in power play percentage 61 for 255 just under 24 percent with the man advantage and they're operating at nearly 40 percent over their last six hockey games so the eagles will try and increase their lead rich Chernamaz with cj young and corey lyons up front lyons who wears number seven for the eagles scored a whopping 26 power play goals last year for the leverage hurricanes of the western hockey league and here is lyons in the center in across the line for rich Chernamaz. whirls to make a play to the right wing point for olsen his shot stick save made by Chevrolet and then Duguay on the right wing able to play it down into the Salt Lake zone. Well a good play uh, by Ron Duguay to get it all the way down nice and a great save by Elaine Chevrolet. Uh, the Eagles should try and get some traffic in front of Chevrolet to uh, prevent his sight of the shot on net. Here's the true pass now for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles into the San Diego zone poke checked and cleared away by the San Diego goals. Of course no icing Randy when a team is shorthanded and San Diego can just dump it into the Eagles territory. Well that's their game plan get it out of their end at any cost do whatever they can to get it all the way down the ice. Here's Daryl Olson smashes it right back into the goal zone as the Eagles try and increase the lead. Here is Mark Bureau to the right of the San Diego net back to the point for Lassard swivels to the near side for Tim Sweeney back to the point for Rick Lassard as the Eagles wheel and deal on the power play. Olson at the point fakes the shot hands for Tim Sweeney his pass across is blocked off by the defenseman uh, Morton for San Diego, and then he himself paws it down and swings it deep into the Salt Lake zone. So the goal's doing a good job, shorthanded. Well, they're keeping a very tight box, uh, Mike. If you see the way they set up in their own zone, it's almost like a little box, and they're keeping the passing of the Eagles on the outside of that box, uh, uh, not letting them have a good scoring opportunity. Eagles play again into the San Diego zone. However, immediately McKinnis winds it deep into the Golden Eagles zone, and Sharples will set it up for his own defense. So Sharples plays the puck as a third defenseman. Well, uh, that's a great asset to a team when your goalie is able to move the puck uh, well like he does. Here's a chance for Kevin Crick, but he is unable to pull the trigger. Just seven seconds left in the penalty. The Eagles trying to increase their 2 0 lead. Here's Kevin Grant for Salt Lake. The rookie, Paul Cruz, with McKinnis steals. Out of the penalty box is Young, but the pass through is off the mark. Had Young caught the pass, he might have had a clear cut breakaway. The Eagles, however, control the puck. Todd Hart gets in for Cruz a shot. Chevrolet the save. And Grant controls the rebound, pushes it right back behind the net. Deasley and Rod Dahlman collide. Deasley trying to cut in front of Dahlman, knocks him down. The referee Cassidy watches impassively as the goals play at the center. The Eagles with a 2 0 lead here in San Diego, California. And uh, Kevin Melrose, another Eagle rookie out of Harvard, able to play at the center. And then Sullivan smacked by Brian Deasley at the blue line. And then we're going to have a stop to play as Deasley really gave it to Sullivan, who gets up slowly to the left of the San Diego goal just outside the blue line. The Eagles up 2 0 here in San Diego. And we'll be right back from the sports arena in just a moment. More people are coming and going in Honda Accords than any other car in the U.S. Now, for an unprecedented limited time, your Utah Honda dealers are going to make Honda Accord even more pleasurable with a special 8.9% financing offer. Honda Accord. Your Utah Honda dealers. Ken Garth, Peterson, Dallies, Willie, Academy, Heritage. With service as good as the Hondas they sell. Shots on goal in the opening period. San Diego outshot so late 10 8. But the Eagles have the lead at 2 0. And uh, on the right side, the Eagles play at the center. And then Young able to chip it right back in. Glad you've joined us here from San Diego. The Eagles clear it deep into the goals territory. Racing back after it is Young. And as soon as he touches it, icing is the call. And 
the faceoff will come all the way back. Of course, the Eagles on their own side of center race, very deep into the San Diego end. Gold Young touches it as a result of the faceoff deep in the Salt Lake territory. It doesn't matter where the player shoots it from, Mike, as long as he's on the other side of the red line. Faceoff is going to go all the way back to the faceoff circle on the on the right side. Uh, you'll see that if it crosses, if the player shoots it from the other side of the center all the way down the ice, uh, it's going to be whistled and then brought all the way back. Warren Sharples and goal for Salt Lake, looking to move over the 500 mark. He's 9 9 and 1. He was born in Montreal, Quebec, but grew up in Calgary. Of course, uh, the Eagles, the farm team, the top developmental team for the Calgary Flames. Here is the Golden Eagle, the player Young clearing it deep into the San Diego zone. Turnham has trying to dig it free, but the goals come up with a puck. Here is Young in the center, right side for Duguay. Drops it for Young. He is being tied up and then hit beautifully by Osiki, who tries to ride him against the boards. Osiki and Young still collide. And Duguay back of the net for San Diego. Young all over him. And then uh, Norton hands it right to the Golden Eagles player, Daryl Olson, who's able to break up the right wing side. In for CJ Young, shoots one, but it's a whistle on offside as Young let the shot go. But we heard the whistle, the 5.37 gone in the second, 2 nothing Salt Lake. And of course, Randy offside. If a player for the uh, uh, offensive team is trapped in ahead of the play, preceding the puck. It's almost like soccer, Mike, where, the, where you have to be on, on the right side of the line before the ball, or in this case, the puck crosses the, crosses the line. And uh, the, the rule is there for obvious reasons, so that uh, someone doesn't sit and cherry pick in the opposition zone and uh, just stand at the other end. C.J. Young uh, shoots it, and the whole play was whistled down as it was uh, stopped at the blue line. Kerry Culloch was just a little bit eager to try to get to the net, perhaps to collect a rebound or whatever, and he got himself ahead of the play. Mark Duro flanked by Tim Sweeney and uh, Corey Lyons. The Eagles have 10 forwards tonight and six defensemen. Here's Rick Lassard tied up. It's Wallen to center and Kevin Melrose able to play it right back into the goal zone. And Darren Bannister shoots it free to center. Lyons trying to jam up on the boards. And finally, it's Martinson who's able to stick it right back behind the Salt Lake goal. Eagles leading 2 to nothing here in the second period of play. San Diego in a four check, and the puck is loose on the right wing side. A quick shot towards the goal. Sharples gets a piece. Hall for San Diego to tour. Shoots one. Sharples gets a piece, but Steve Martinson and Rick Lassard have some words. Martinson trying to get some punches through. Lassard doesn't want any piece of Martinson and the Weinman in a separate. Martinson uh, ferociously trying to get at Salt Lake's defenseman Rick Lassard, and Rick Lassard feels Martinson should get an extra penalty for jumping in late. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how the penalties are called here. Uh, Rick Lassard showed uh, great restraint by not uh, uh, retaliating to what Martinson was doing to him. Uh, there again, he probably thought that it was more beneficial to him to try and stay out of the penalty box and perhaps try and get a power play out of the whole situation here. So uh, depending on how uh, the penalties are called, I would have to suspect, Mike, uh, that the Golden Eagles are going to go on a power play. We saw Martinson go off. He played for Salt Lake 32 games in the 1984-85 season. He had 140 so minutes of penalties in 32 games and has a tremendous uh, penalty total over 2,000 in his nine-year career. And Rick Lassard, no stranger to the penalty box. So Lassard, uh, this season for Salt Lake, 209 minutes in penalties, and that's a pretty good total at this time of the season. The Eagles up two to nothing here in San Diego, California, and we'll come right back in just a moment. Well, nope, we're gonna keep it here as uh, we're gonna take a look at the last uh, play for San Diego. Well, watch Rick Lassard, he's, he gives uh, uh, Martinson a push there into Warren Sharples, and that starts the whole situation right there. Martinson comes right back at him and pushes, and, and uh, referee uh, Dave Cassidy uh, saw things pretty even there. He thought both players uh, were involved equally and uh, whistled uh, coincidental penalties, so nobody will be on the power play uh, after this altercation. Martinson for roughing, Lassard for cross-checking at 6-13. The Eagles maintain their 2-0 lead, and back in his own side for San Diego is Darren Bannister for the goals. Able to play at the center and Salt Lake's Kevin Melrose able to pop it right back in because Charlie Sinner hits it with a high stick. It's whistled down on the far side but the Eagles up two to nothing. Darren Bannister, the defenseman for San Diego. But of course, uh, Randy, the play will be whistled down if a player has a stick above his shoulders and gets a piece of the puck. Well, that's the key right there, Mike. You can knock the puck out of the air, but if the stick raises up over your shoulders, you're not allowed to touch it. If that happens, and your team is beneficial to your team, meaning that they gain control of the puck, the whistle will go. Here is Bannister plays for San Diego. The Eagles up two to nothing. 
And uh, in the four check is uh, Eagles Deasley, right wing point for Grant, however, it skips the center and low. It's just ahead for Larry Floyd. Floyd with the 54 points for San Diego this year, knocked down, and we're gonna have a penalty, I believe, against Salt Lake. As soon as Harkins touches the puck, Eagles will be a man short here in San Diego, and the goals with that tremendous power play, a total of 78 power play goals, will have the man advantage. It is a 2-0 Salt Lake lead here in San Diego, California, and we'll be right back in just a moment. 14 KXIV Hot 94.9, the crew and Osco Club present the Don Salt Lake Sports Car Extravaganza February 16th. 70 dealer stables will have super selection and bargains. Uh, I think it's just a well rounded car show. It's, I'm very impressed with it. Meet Fred Boletnikoff and get his autograph 2 to 4 p.m. You can redeem any planters or leaf products through the purchase for a dollar off an autograph picture. The Don Salt Lake Sports Car Extravaganza at the Utah State Fair Park, 1000 West North Temple. Admission $3 at the door. Eagles lead the San Diego goals 2 to 9. Kevin Melrose for tripping at 653. San Diego and their third power players. McKinnis a shot. Charples the save and the rebound skips wide. The goals 0 for 2 in this game. This is their third man advantage chance and immediately Salt Lake play it down. Well, that's the, the, the goals are just going to get back to the basics. Give it to Larry Floyd, who has one of the hardest shots in the league. Let it go, get some traffic, and, and hopefully get a rebound out of the whole situation and put it in. Here is uh, C.J. Young for Salt Lake able to play it down. The Eagles scored a shorthanded goal already and have scored a whopping 14 shorthanded goals this year. Here's the puck loose to the defense and Daryl Olson swings back of his own side. Now back of his net, picks an opening and plays it all the way down. Not only did he shoot it down into the goal zone, but he eats up five or six seconds. Well, that, that's called ragging the puck, Mike. When a player gets that, goes back, stays around, does a few dipsy doodles and kills a penalty uh, clock. It's called ragging the puck. Just over a minute to go in the penalty. 12-12 left in the second. The Eagles with a 2-0 lead. Larry Floyd, Ron Duguay trying to work it free for San Diego, but covering up in the slot is Marco Siki. The Eagles break out three on two. Here's Bureau, flips it right back behind the goal, and San Diego's Hall plays to the right of the goal. So the Eagles' penalty killing continues to be very strong. Here's Hall in the center, slams it right back into the leg zone. Sharples plays it back of the net, winds it free, but to Taylor Hall for San Diego. Back of the net for Sullivan. Eagles Olsen writes a goal player off the puck, and Hall plays to the right of the Salt Lake goal. He and Kevin Grant try and muscle it free. It's worked the uh, right of the Salt Lake net. San Diego's uh, forward Sullivan tries to poke it free. Grant winds it into the corner. Sullivan comes up with a puck. Left point for McKinnis to Sullivan in front of the goal, but it's blocked off beautifully by Darrell Olsen and Sweeney, unable to play the zone. Uh, in a four-check, Sullivan moves puck in front, and finally Olsen leads it for Bureau. That's just about going to do it on the penalty. The Eagles uh, player ready to come back on. Mel Rossi is on. The Eagles have killed it off, and the goal's 0 for 3. Well, very important kill there. Uh, the Eagles want to get the next goal. It's so important to go up 3 to nothing uh, rather than make it 2 to 1. Here is the Eagles uh, defender Kevin Grant played on left wing, a player out of the Ontario Hockey League, junior hockey. Here is the Deasley, able to wind the center, and then Grant has to go back, and he leaves it for the defensive-oriented Marco Siki. On left wing for Brian Deasley, but a two-line offside is the call as Deasley hits Young on the far wing, and we have seen the offside, it's a straight offside when a player is ahead of the play, but we also have what we call, Randy, a two-line offside, when a pass crosses two lines, uh, obviously, here in San Diego. Yeah, Mike, you can't make a pass from your zone crossing your own blue line and the center ice before anybody else touches it. You have to be within the confines of your own half of the ice to be able to make a stick to stick pass. Eagles leading 2 to nothing. Mark Bureau and C.J. Young, first period goals. The Eagles looking for their seventh straight win. That is the high watermark for Salt Lake. And with a victory tonight, the Eagles in second place in the West would move themselves 13 points ahead of San Diego. And that's why this game is so important, Randy, because the goals could cut it back to nine with a win here tonight. A Salt Lake victory, and it's a pretty good distance between the two teams. Well, uh, this is their, their big thing that they're working on right now is get a little bit of distance between them and everybody else in that division and try and catch Peoria, who's slumping right now. Salt Lake coming into the action tonight, 19 points back of the pace-setting Peoria Riverman, the first-place team in the division. Here is the play to the side of the Salt Lake goal. Ron Dubay for Al Tour shoots in a stick save Sharples and flex up in the stands. Al Tour let it fly. The former Los Angeles King, Minnesota North Star and Hartford Whaler. Sharples gets a piece of it. And 
Orange Sharples has been outstanding. Steve Gannett is clearly the number one goaltender. He's played 30 games this year. Sharples is outstanding as Al Tour winds up for the shot. Well, a little bit of a bad angle. Perhaps may have gone wide, but nonetheless, Orange Sharples got a pad on it and kicked it out of bounds to relieve a little bit of the pressure that the goals have been putting on him. What's it like for Warren Sharples as uh, the number two goaltender in Salt Lake? Well, I'm sure it's a little bit tough on him, uh, but he just has to remain focused, uh, wait for his chance. He's playing very well right now, and uh, he just has to continue on in his ways, and I'm sure he's going to see a lot more ice time because of it. Sharples played his college hockey at the University of Michigan. The captain, Rich Turnamass, ready to drop against Larry Floyd. They were teammates together in Maine of the American Hockey League and also with the New Jersey Devils of the NHL. Here's the Darren Lois shot back to Flex Wine. Cutting in his banister for San Diego to the side of the goal for Floyd. Centers for Tour's shot. That's blocked off. San Diego's Larry Floyd, their leading point scorer for Al Tour at the left wing side. As the goals try and work it free, low and McCready go wide. Puck is loose and Sharple is able to pounce on top and hold on flopping in that goal crease area. And of course, uh, Sharples would like to stand up, but if the puck is loose, he'll fall on top. And now, some more physical activity in front of the Salt Lake goal. Rich Turnamaz, Darren Lowe, and C.J. Young involved also. Well, that's uh, that's due to part from frustration on the, on the San Diego goals. They're uh, applying a lot of pressure and really have nothing to show for their efforts. So uh, they're getting a little bit frustrated. They have to control that bottled up and uh, just uh, put their energy into shooting on Sharples. The Eagles leading 2 to nothing here in San Diego, California. Hope you're enjoying it. We'll be right back in just a moment. What's that food nothing at the San Diego Sports Arena. Scott McGrady, so Lake Darren Lowe, San Diego, two each for roughing at 9.58. So matching penalties, so the teams will play at an even strength situation, five skaters apiece. Well, uh, they both have received two minutes each, so uh, rather than have the t uh, teams drop down to four players each, it's a new rule that came in a couple of years ago that said if, if there's offsetting penalties, uh, they'll just go into the penalty box, get their two minutes, but the team will remain at five minutes apiece. Caused by Wayne Gretzky because he was so dangerous in four-on-four -four situations with the Edmonton Oilers and Los Angeles Kings, they had to change the rule. Well, of course, he has so much skill, and the less players there are on the ice, the more room he has to move around, and, and he just was too much of a threat. So, uh, Wayne Gretzky causing a rule change in this game of hockey because of his dominance. Here are the Eagles trying to work it for Kevin Grant in against Morton. Grant tries to center for Sweeney in the slot. He shoots, and the goaltender, Chevrolet, gets a piece, and finally Morton plays for the goal. Eagles close to advancing their lead to 3-0. To Here's the puck loose to the right of the Eagles. The goal, smart backhands behind the net. Eagles into four check. Mark Bureau for Tim Sweeney. Here's the product of uh, Boston College. Sweeney trying to work it free for Bureau. And Sweeney hands for Bureau in front. Centers in the slot. Samard crashes into the goal, but is unable to get a piece of it. As it rolls wide, San Diego's Taylor Hall versus the center and uh, plays it right back to the Eagles zone. Just over nine minutes left in the second. The Eagles with a 2-0 lead over the goals. And then Robbie Nichols takes a hit from Martin Samard. And I think he's going to get called for a penalty. He feels Nichols started it. But I believe Samard's going to be the guilty player to the right of Warren Sharples as Robbie Nichols caused some trouble last night. As I believe a San Diego player, it is Nichols, I think, that is down and out. But Nichols is one of those guys He's kind of an actor. And we'll see what happens. Uh, Kevin Grant was there also. And I think he got his stick up. Samard is there too. That's exactly what happened. It was Kevin Grant's stick who accidentally came up and caught Robbie Nichols there. But Martin Samard is going to be whistled for the penalty. I don't really think that David Cassidy uh, is going to make a proper call on this. Partly due because I don't think he saw it properly, Mike. Well, we'll see uh, what takes place here as we uh, have here in San Diego. Grant and Samard were right there together, but it appeared that Grant got his stick on, and Martin Samard receives the roughing penalty at 10.56. The goals will go in their fourth power play. Nichols is still down, as uh, Grant did get his there's, stick there's Kevin on Grant's stick right Robbie there. Nichols. But as Samard gets called, he was right there, too, and gave a little push, and... 
So the Eagles, Samard is in the penalty box, but did the Eagles, Grant, will uh, not serve the penalty. Samard will be in the box. Nevertheless, the goals will go on the power play, their fourth of the game. It's 2 nothing Eagles, and we will be right back in just a, man, in just a moment from the San Diego Sports Arena. So many people have enjoyed good times and good food at Talk of the Town Restaurant. We invite you to continue to enjoy in 1991 with our early bird special of the day, Sunday through Thursday. Complete dinner for just 9.50 between 4 and 7 p.m. Talk of the Town features homemade pasta and delicately seasoned entrees to delight the most discriminating taste. Enjoy live piano entertainment Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings. Talk of the Town Restaurant, 723 East, 7200 South. Call for reservations. Open seven days a week. Sunday brunch, 10 to 3. Enjoy an evening of partners, Ogden or Holiday, famous for truly unique atmosphere and really good food. Partners specialize in fresh seafood and tender aged beef, featuring our own homemade recipes. We serve dollar-saving early bird specials 5 to 6.30 p.m. every Monday through Thursday. Choose from six of our most popular entrees, complete dinners at lunchtime prices. Enjoy the best for less at Partners, 337 31st Street in Ogden and 4668 South Holiday Boulevard, Holiday. Back here in San Diego at the Sports Arena, the Eagles with a 2 0 lead. Kevin Grant got his stick up on Robbie Nichols, who was taken to the player's bench. He uh, was upended, but Samard is in the penalty box for so late. Well, it was Kevin Grant's stick that uh, did the damage, but uh, Samard was there. David Cassidy uh, thought maybe uh, the glove that Mark Samard got up high was what uh, caused the problem, but uh, to us, it looked like it was Kevin Grant's stick. But uh, Nichols skates to the player's bench uh, to get some repairs. The goal's now in the power play, their fourth of the game, and a chance to cut the lead. The Eagles have a 2 nothing advantage. Here's Daryl Olsen, picks an opening, plays, but not all. Pulled down by McKinnon to the right side for Floyd as he swings it to the right of the Salt Lake goal. Ron Duguay battles against the boards, holds on to the puck, being watched by Salt Lake's uh, defenseman Mark Osiki as San Diego's Simmer for Duguay. He is hit by Osiki, and the puck is loose in front for Simmer. Centers a chance for Floyd. Lockdown. And Salt Lake's turn as wheels on the up wing side into the San Diego's own cross for Young. It's just out of his reach. Young trying to jam it free, and finally it's taken by San Diego. 8.08 left in the second. 2 nothing Eagles. A minute left in the minor penalty against Samar. The Eagles, Sharples bounces on top and holds on deep into the Salt Lake uh, goal crease area. And the Eagles so far killing off another penalty. San Diego, both the three to have not uh, converted too many, only two in their last point. Here in San Diego, you have to credit the Eagles penalty killing. They've done a great job of uh, keeping San Diego from the slot area right in front of Warren Sharp. They've been absolutely superb, Mike. They've really limited the scoring opportunities of the goals, par uh, partially because uh, they're keeping that uh, box very nice. They're, uh, when the puck goes down low, they're forcing the player into making bad decisions, and uh, they're really not uh, letting the goals uh, get very many shots from the point area. Glad you've joined us tonight. The Eagles leading 2 to nothing. They still have another minute to kill on this power play. And Sullivan for San Diego. Able to play it to the side of the goal for Darren Lowe. He's a very offensive player for San Diego as well. Puck is loose. Grant knocks down Steve Martinson. And Sullivan plays to Martinson on the far side. The 31-year-old Minnesota native able to play it for Darren Lowe. Former Flint Spirit in this IHL. And for Sullivan, able to hold on to the point for Floyd. The Eagles doing a great job of playing the, or keeping San Diego on the outside. Here's McKinnis now, holding on. Nice to work it free into the corner. And the goal to play it free in front for Floyd, but uh, Rick Lassard breaks it up and winds it all the way down. Textbook penalty killing by the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. It really is, uh, Mike. They're really uh, frustrating the goals right now. The goals really don't know what to do. They're uh, passing the puck around the outside and not getting any good chances. Here's Floyd a shot. That carries off the backboard. Samard is back on. The Eagles have killed off four straight San Diego power plays. And Samard for Salt Lake able to play it free in the center. So the goals trailing. Two to nothing. They have 78 power play goals in the season, but the Eagles have kept them at bay. Here's Dugate sets it up for the forward Rod Dolman. Ahead on the far wing, Robbie Nichols, who's back for San Diego. He was the player that took that uh, big stick. Here's Dugate, a quick back in. Sharples a save, and then he sweeps it up at the stands. Sharples stops the veteran of 12 NHL seasons, Ron Dugate. Well, as soon as Sharples knocked that over the glass, uh, the captain for the goals, uh, Al Tour, ran down to the referee and said, hey, that's a rule, you're not allowed, the goalie is not allowed to shirt over the glass like that. 
uh, without it touching any part of the glass, or it will be a two-minute minor penalty. Except if you're in the process of making a save, and in this case, Sharples was in the process of stopping the puck, and that's how it deflected up into the stands. But if you just shoot it up in the stands, you get that two-minute minor. I mean, exactly right, Mike, but I'm sure that Al Kewer thought there would be no harm in at least going down to test the referee to see what he thought about it. Sharples makes the save, and then he shoots it up into the crowd, but because he was in the act of making the stop, there's no minor penalty against the Eagles netminder. Here's Bannister, a shot, and save. Sharples off the faceoff, and then San Diego's tour. His shot off the stick of Duguay in the corner. Duguay sees a lot of ice for San Diego. It's the, one of the elder statesmen. Here is Salt Lake Sosiki, sets it up on left wing for Cruz. Charlie Simmer battling with Cruz, and they try and freeze it and succeed. On the far side, number 11 for San Diego, Charlie Simmer. Part, uh, part of three seasons with the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and a member of the famed Triple Crown line with Marcel Dion and Dave Taylor. Simmer played in the mid-1970s with Salt Lake. In fact, he played 140 games with the Golden Eagles from 1974 through 1977. He's on the left wing side of this line with Duque as the Mitch is here in San Diego, adjacent. Simmer part of this line for the San Diego Gulls. The, the puck is loose, right point for Bannister. His shot stays safe, Sharples. The Eagles play it up into the stand and the stop of your play with 6.07 left in the second period. And uh, again, uh, Warren Sharples uh, comes up big between the pipes and the Eagles clear it up into the stand. Well, he's been tested quite a few times throughout the, uh, this team uh, so far, but he's really stood his ground and is showing excellent concentration uh, in uh, keeping control of where he is in his net and uh, controlling his rebounds. So uh, uh, that's one big thing. The Gulls have had an initial shot of Warren Sharples of being able to, to control his rebound, not giving them a second chance. Eagles will be at home tomorrow night, 7 p.m. against the Kansas City Blades. A single game tomorrow evening, again, 7 p.m. at the Salt Palace. We'd love to see you tomorrow night. Here are the Eagles taking control. Young has shot six in by Sharples, and the puck is loose again to the right of the goal, and the Eagles trying to jam it free. Here is the forward Sullivan, but Sharples himself plays it on the left wing side. Here are the Eagles taking control, the side pushes it against the boards, and the Eagles come up with the puck in the center. Scott McCready, a wide pass for Mark Bureau. Bureau for the Eagles, ahead for Samar, blocked off at the defense, and Dave Coral plays the puck. He's a longtime member of the Adirondack Red Wings, the American Hockey League, a veteran in professional hockey. It's clear to the side of the Salt Lake goal. Eagles trying to wind it free, and then all the way to center. Here is Salt Lake's Tim Swinney upended, uh, no call, as uh, Cassidy watches it go by. The Eagles have had only one power play chance tonight. The Eagles leading two to nothing as McCready steers it to the left of the goal, and Coral plays for San Diego. Up ahead for Robbie Nichols, puck bounces on edge. Young takes a somersault on the far side as he was scissored into the San Diego zone. Here is Lyons, pokes it right back in. Young racing three, shoots and a stick save. Sherry rig rebound. Lions unable to control, and the goals break back. Two to nothing, Eagles, and a good scoring chance for Salt Lake. Young moving in for San Diego and whips it behind the Salt Lake goal. Well, both teams are playing excellent defense right now and tying up the opponents and uh, really leaving any of them from having any kind of scoring opportunities. Buck is loose at center. Lions for Kevin Grant. One man back, that's Martinson for Young. Cuts in the slot, but he can't pull the trigger, and low breaks back. Is this game opening up here in San Diego? Low moving in, cuts in the slot, in on goal. Churnham has back checks and takes it away and plays it up into the stands. Rich Chernamaz hustling back into his own side to break up the pass. Oh, great play by Rich Chernamaz uh, just due to a lot of hard work uh, coming back on the plate and uh, really uh, skating hard to get back and help out his defenseman or else there's a potential good scoring opportunity for the goals. Kevin Grant skates to the Salt Lake players bench, a hard-nosed defenseman, uh, played his junior hockey with the Sudbury Wolves of the OHL. He's been so strong back there for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, his second full season. A big part of their defense, too, after the loss of Kenny Sabrin, players like Kevin Grant have to step forward and be leaders now, and, and he's handled the, the pressure well. Here's Brian Deasley, cuts in on goal. His shot deflects one, then he crashes into the goal area. The net has been dislodged as Deasley just skated right into the goaltender of Chevrolet as the net was dislodged. And, of course, the last couple of years, they've had those magnetic nets, and in this case, it really helps because it's easily crashed in there. The net gently went off uh, its moorings into the San Diego zone. As uh, 
Brian Beasley works uh, into the goals territory. Well, he's streaking down the right side there. Morton uh, is uh, pursuing him there. Per perhaps got up high on him. Uh, it could have been a, a good chance for Cassie, perhaps, to call a penalty against the goals. But uh, uh, he thought that uh, Beasley was able to control the puck enough to get a shot away and uh, didn't warrant a penalty. Of course, if the defensive player intentionally knocks the net off its moorings, they can award a penalty shot to the offensive team, which is a very rare call. And uh, uh, also, uh, or if a player has a clear-cut breakaway and he's tripped from behind, a penalty shot may be called. And of course, a penalty shot is uh, when the, the puck is put at center ice and uh, the player is able to go uh, after the referee blows a whistle on a clear-cut breakaway down on the goal uh, while the player is being stopped. Darrell Olson picks up a 10-minute misconduct at 15.36 here in this uh, period, actually 15.46, but as uh, he skates towards the uh, right way in, he's walking towards the Salt Lake uh, dressing room, but Bob Francis was very upset at the Salt Lake bench. Jamie Kislip, the assistant coach, former member of the Quebec Nordiques and Calgary Flames. Bob Francis not happy about that. Well, with only four minutes and 14 seconds left in this period, and Darrell Olsen getting a 10-minute penalty, uh, he won't go in the penalty box and serve it. He'll just go into the dressing room and, and, and calm down and cool down and wait for the next period. Eagles leading two to nothing, scoring both their goals in the opening stanza. And Paul Cruz, the rookie for Salt Lake, clears it in. Cruz, only 20 years of age, winds it right back behind the goal. And Larry Floyd for San Diego winds it out of his own end. There is Deasley steals for Salt Lake, winds up, shoots, and a save by Chevrier. And McKinnis plays. Deasley, who just a few moments earlier cracked into that goal crease. Here's Martinson for Floyd. He shot, Trevor gets a piece as he went for the short side. And the Eagles able to play it in the center in a two-man break in the goal zone. Cruz with Beasley. Cruz shoots, save Chevrolet, big rebound, and he can't control the shot. Now a centering pass, save Chevrolet off of Todd Harkins in front of the goal. Paul Cruz pushing with a San Diego player. Martinson in there also to the left of the net. Martinson and Harkins in there also. But it uh, was a tremendous scoring chance for Salt Lake. Harkins, the last man in. Cruz had a great chance. Chevrier stopped him as, again, they're milling around to the left of the San Diego goal. Well, a little bit of frustration again. Uh, Cruz was taken into the boards hard uh, by McInnes. He took a little bit of uh, disliking to that start, a little bit of push and shoving. Uh, there's a great save by Warren Sharples. The pass came across and, and was bouncing a little bit. Hard for Larry Floyd to control it, and it looked like as if it rolled off the tip of the stick. Maybe not where he was aiming it, but uh, nonetheless, Warren Sharples had to come up big and make a, a great blocker save. Warren Sharples has been outstanding in goal this evening, and of course the Eagles coming back the other way and having some scoring chances on Elaine Chevrier. 332 left in the second, and uh, the Eagles, uh, Paul Cruz had the first chance. He, he saw a little bit of light between Chevrier's legs. Uh, tried to put it through there, uh, corralled his own rebound and passed it out in front to Todd Harkins. He got a piece of it on top of the goal. Uh, uh, Elaine Chevrier had great concentration in making that save, or the game could have very easily been a, a three-goal lead for the Eagles. We have a goaltender's duel battling here uh, here in San Diego. Paul Cruz and Rob McKinnis, two each for roughing at 16-28. So again, matching minor penalties. No power play here in San Diego. The Eagles with a two to nothing lead. Interesting on that last play, Todd Harkins and Elaine Chevrier, both products of Miami of Ohio, college hockey. Very few players have played at that school. Very few have made it professionally. And lo and behold, Harkins has a chance to, to score on Chevrier, and Chevrier makes the save. And both are great prospects. Of course, Chevrier has spent a lot of time in the NHL, and uh, Todd Harkins is a great prospect for the Calgary Flames and the, for the future. Todd Harkins and Elaine Chevrier, products of the Redskins of Miami of Ohio. That's at Oxford, Ohio. Here is the lead pass clear right back into the Salt Lake zone. Racing back after Kevin Grant. Icing is the call. 319 left in the second. 2 nothing Eagles. And of course, again, on the icing is the Golden Eagles uh, will have a faceoff in the San Diego zone. 2 nothing Eagles. We'll be back in just a moment. What can you get for $49.99? At America's Best, new patients get daily wear soft contacts or two pair of eyeglasses, single vision lenses, and the eye exam is included. That's two pair of high fashion eyeglasses or a pair of daily wear soft contacts, including eye exam $49.99. Only at America's Best. Contacts and eyeglasses. 
final days. Live from the San Diego Sports Arena, the Eagles with a 2-0 lead over San Diego. Glad you've joined us here tonight. Eagles win the draw back, and they have to scamper back in their own side. Kevin Grant paired with Scott McCready on defense for Salt Lake. McCready sets it up for Mark Bureau in his own side, a cross ice pass for Grant, shovels it into the San Diego zone. Sweeney moving in, pulls up, stops to make a play, being watched, knocked down by Bannister, and then on the far side, Samard trying to dig it free. Eagles, the Bureau shot blocked off, and then it's wound right back to center where Grant on his back hand dumps it in. Under three minutes to go in the second, the Eagles having a 2-0 lead. We're gonna have a penalty now against Salt Lake, a delayed penalty, and an empty net. As soon as Young touches it, shoots it into the empty goal, it's going to be stopped anyway. It appears to be a roughing call against Salt Lake, and San Diego, believe it or not, will have their fifth power play chance of the night here in the, the second period. Well, uh, that was just a case of a retaliation. David Cassidy didn't see the initial uh, part of that play there. Uh, Kevin Grant just reacted to what happened to him. And then as David Cassidy turned around, he saw that. And uh, Grant's going to go in for two minutes uh, for roughing. It's a roughing call, 17-22 the time. And again, San Diego in their fifth power play chance of the night. Grant would have seven players on the Golden Eagles with over 100 minutes in penalties, three players the 200 mark. Gary Clark, Darren Banks, and Rick Lassar ran to the penalty box now. And again, a big test for Salt Lake. It seems they've been in the penalty box uh, for most of this second period. They have to be careful because uh, up until this point, they have very good control of this game. They don't want to put any kind of wind into the goal sails uh, uh, by giving them a power play goal or anything like that, Mike. So uh, they've really got to cut down on their penalty minutes and uh, start controlling their uh, uh, aggravations and aggressions. Rich Turnamass, who had 101 points at first Lake a couple of years ago, able to drop it back for Kevin Melrose at his own blue line and sails it on his backhand right back in. And that's what the Eagles want to do, just play it deep into the goal zone. And they've done it well all night, killing off all the power play chances of the goals. Here is the forward Floyd for San Diego. Dances into the Salt Lake zone. Nice to work it past Salt Lake. So Siki, who stands him up, Duke in front, shoots at Charples, gets a piece. Here's Floyd now for the goal. Hands it for Dugay, left point for Charlie Simmer. On the San Diego man advantage, Simmer now tries to toss it across, but it's deflected up off the stick of Chernobaz and up into the stands. Eagles again keeping San Diego on the perimeter. What you don't want to do is allow San Diego a chance in the slot on a two on one or three on two, and they're keeping them on the outside. They can pass it around all night long as long as they don't dump it in front of the slot. The Eagles are doing an excellent chance of uh, keeping their stick in the passing lanes like any kind of a pass through the slot to an open man. Uh, sometimes uh, the goals are really forcing uh, the issue and uh, making bad decisions and trying to put it through bodies and through sticks, and that's where they're coming into problems. Warren Charles took a shot in so late during the past weekend that uh, hit the neck uh, race area on the mat, but he was okay. Here is the San Diego player Young tossing it right back behind the goal. Under two minutes to go in the period, 115 left in the power play for San Diego. Here's Simmer, out back of the goal. Holds on for the goals, drops it to Young at the point for San Diego. The collegiate product, Young, back of the goal for Simmer. Duguay rolls in front, shot stopped to the defense. Now, Young a shot, that is blocked off. Big rebound, Sharples covers up in front of the Salt Lake goal with the San Diego goals buzzing in the Salt Lake goal crease area. Well, this is really the first kind of pressure that the goals have uh, put on the Eagles during their power play opportunities. And it's just a matter of getting people in front of the net, getting it and shooting it on Warren Sharples. That creates a bunch of problems. And you never know what's going to happen. Here, uh, down low, uh, Ron Dugay and Charlie Simmer, two big men. They're able to fend off everybody. Dugay steps out in front, gets a great scoring chance on Warren Sharples, who stood his ground and uh, saved it, kicked it right back out. Young takes a shot, but look at Simmer right in front, right in there, causing a lot of trouble. And on the far side, uh, Norton was there, ready to pounce on a rebound, too. Warren Sharples, being such a big, tall, lanky man, uh, has such a uh, a big wingspan. He covers a lot of the net, no matter if he's down or up, Mike. Face off uh, will come up to the right of the Salt Lake Gold. Eagles up to it up. Like another great sequence of saves by the Eagles net liner. The Salt Lake defense keeping the goals at bay. Here is Young now for San Diego, holding on with uh, 50 seconds left of the penalty. Lowest shot that deflects uh, wide. Cutting it is Young. Back of the goal for Big Martinson as San Diego wheel and deal. Here is Taylor Hall. His shot, it's blocked off of the defense. Again, San Diego control. On this man advantage opportunity, 
Here's Sullivan, cuts it to slot, checked off by Smart, and then Turnamaz winds it down. And the Eagles do another nice job of clearing it deep into the San Diego end. 25 seconds left in the penalty. Under a minute to go now in the period. The Eagles with the 2-0 advantage. Turnamaz hacks down Young for the goal. And it's a walk right back off the center. Just 15 seconds left in the penalty now. And the Eagles, Savard, winds it in. That's just about going to do it on the penalty. Outstanding penalty killing by the Eagles. Uh, the goals are really starting to get frustrated and it's starting to show right now. Here's Martinson covers up into the zone. That's it. The Eagles have killed it off. The goal's 0 for 5 with a power play. Here's Martinson. Hands it right to the Golden Eagles player on the far side. Uh, Osiki, it's wound to the blue line. And low covers up. Slap shot. Pat St. Sharples. Big rebound. And it deflects wide. Goals trying to center one. Loose to the side of the goal. As San Diego wheel and deal. They're trying to cut the lead. The center and pass in front, but it's blocked off. Sullivan now for the goals. Behind the net for low. On this uh, San Diego attack, low trying to center for Martinson. But he's too well checked by Kevin Grant. Here is the puck center. Two seconds to go in the period. Eagles there at the center. And that's it. The buzzer sounds signaling the end of the period. The Eagles uh, holding to the 2 0 lead despite some last ditch scoring chances for the goal. Oh, great effort uh, by Warren Sharples to, to preserve a shutout so far after two periods. He's really stood on his head. And uh, when we've had, uh, the Eagles have had some trouble, he's been the backbone for him tonight. And he stood, uh, stood his ground and uh, kicked, uh, kicked the pucks out left and right. Sharples has a professional shutout. Uh, the Eagles have had three as a team this year. Gannett, Sharples, and Wayne Cowley have all picked up shutouts. The Eagles have lost only one game in regulation all season long when they have uh, the lead through two periods of play. Quite a mixed up play there, uh, Mike. The puck almost went outside the blue line, but the Gulls were able to keep it in and through that uh, game. Uh, about three or four great scoring opportunities on Warren Sharples. Darren Lowe had a great shot. Uh, he was able to kick it out. Uh, Markson controlled the rebound, and uh, through that uh, play, we were able to gain about three or four great scoring opportunities. Well, Sharples are looking for his 10th win of the year. The Eagles, within just 20 minutes of the play, uh, from uh, picking up the 31st win of the year. We're going to go down to Mike Longy at the Southern Golden Eagles. Rich Turnamaz, just off the ice and the captain of the Golden Eagles. You're doing a great job. You've kept them scoreless in the second period. We played shorthanded an awful lot during that second period, but we're covering up well for Sharples. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, I think the biggest reason why we're playing shorthanded so much this period was uh, taking too many unnecessary penalties, uh, too many retaliatory penalties. They'll come in and uh, take a cheap shot at us, and then we'll retaliate. And uh, most of the time, the referee doesn't see the first shot. They always see the retaliation. You guys have been playing hockey all your lives, and you know that that's going to happen. It seems that uh, these fellas, these uh, kind of older, more experienced players in San Diego, uh, sometimes bring up the worst in our players. Yeah, they're, uh, they've got some experienced players, you know. I think for the most part, we've played a pretty solid defensive game. Uh, Warren Trapp was quite exceptional tonight so far, but we got another 20 minutes to go and uh, try and get the two points. When you go back into the uh, locker room and talk with Coach Francis, what, what goes on in there right now? You're cruising with a 2 to nothing lead. Uh, be concentrating on keeping the puck in their end? Well, I'll bet uh, my life on it that he's in there saying, come on, guys, we can't take too many retaliatory penalties. Uh, we've taken our quarter for the evening, and now we just got to sort of suck it up a little bit and play good defense in front of one sharp goals, get the puck deep, and uh, and just keep playing solid and give it 100%. Captain Rich Turnamaz of the Golden Eagles now back up to Mike Barrick. <laughs> 